hear that sound? <laughs> Go ahead, open up the camera. Oh man, we're, I think we're done. I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. People are gonna be like, "Hey, how come they're late?" Well, there's a reason. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if I look particularly content, you'll know why. Why am I on my knees with paper towels? Why? Why? Because Mancuda's had a book accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Your new Delta yeah. Tau Kai nickname is Pivot. This sucks. <laughs> Again? Depends how much money is offered to me. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait until the authorities kick the door and they're like, okay, OJ, where's the body? <laughs> Too soon? It's everywhere. It's just all over the fucking carpet. The interesting thing about it is I don't hear the usual crunching sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Give me a um, bottle of Pine Sol for my glazed donut. To go. <laughs> This is so weird. Oh, yeah, this boy. is weirdest yeah. intro ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Guitars in 80s Metal live. Definitely live. <laughs> it's funny, too, because I know people are in the chat going, why the hell is the show late every week? Well, every That's... week there's a, there's a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It just wow. blew everywhere. John Mancuda is showing us how his job interview as a jizz mopper went this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plenty of experience. I'm a pro. From both ends of the spectrum. You know, you notice my head, my newest headshot is from the back of my head. Yeah. It's not, that's how most casting directors see me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Come great. On, you've man. never looked, you've never looked better, John, by the way. Just want to let you I'm know. You're really well framed. I'm very handsome from the back of the head. Yeah. Oh my god, look at all these look at all these fucking paper towels, man. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and more. Yay! Man, Kuda got his monthly friend this morning. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we'd like to thank wow. our sponsors, Bang Energy Drink, for this bukaki laden intro. Yeah, this is actually uh bang related. <laughs> it certainly is. Bang. Not in the way he wishes. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, bang I energy love drink. Uh, definitely for uh, for those experiences when you're on your knees and you need more energy. Bang energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> that mic looks huge. Size queen. It's, this is Ron Jeremy, the mic of mics. <laughs> <laughs> That's your Peter North endorsement. <laughs> He's certainly pointing north. I remember. I forget. Hey, that there's a crusty sock phrase. under here. Of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's a yeah. couple. Yeah. Everybody oh, wants to know where that miss. There is no such thing as the missing left sock. Everybody talks about, oh, you're missing a left sock in the, in the laundry. No, you're not. You know exactly <laughs> where it is. It's under the bed. Yeah, too bad it's crunchy like a cornflake today. Uh, that's ridiculous. Rewatulous? Yeah, yeah, that's how it got that way. Mm -hmm. So you did you spill that whole can? Uh, like three quarters of the can. Oh, <laughs> and it's and it's a red flavor too. And now your rug <laughs> is going to be up all night. Yeah, my rug my rug is definitely uh, feeling good. All right, that's that's as good as it's going to get. I'm talking about the show, by the way. That's as good as it's going to get. So you might as well just tune into something else right now. Because yep. yep, call it a day. Yeah. By the way, Mike Neese, the mic does look like Mo Nomad from the Star Trek original series, which is also God. Nomad and Gog were the same were the same robot. Oh Gog. Oh Gog. Gog and Magog. Remember remember that? Gog? I do. A little science fiction for you. Trivia. Everybody. Yeah, that's, I never saw it. That's the, some next level nerd shit, as my friend Paulie says. Yeah, Gog. Yeah, thank you, Bang Energy Drink, for this uh, bang explosion all over my floor. Hello, everyone in the chat. I'm trying to. I can't log in. Hello, Groin. Wow. Hey. Why? 
Why did why did he grab his groin and then you went to my face? <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to see your happy reaction. Happy? <laughs> Cause I'm happy. Are y'all good? Yeah, we can play the intro now. Okay. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> See, now people don't, you know what that was like? That was like watching the warm up comedian like before Letterman. You know how like everybody everybody thinks like all those late night shows, they start out and they're great. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Jimmy Kimmel. They don't realize the first 25 minutes of that. What are you guys doing? <laughs> um, Why is he always on his knees? Why is he so down there cleaning up? Everybody knows our people don't do manual labor, not since the pyramids. <laughs> always with the cheese jokes, Manguda. <laughs> Manguda. Uh. Manguda. Hey, Manguda, <laughs> did you find my sock? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, but that's that was what uh, that was. That was like the warm up of the show. You were like Hank Kingsley going, "Okay, uh, over here is the light, and uh, it says uh, <laughs> applesauce." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, hey, hey, everybody! It's uh, December, December, December first. Holy shit! Hello, hello, wow. December, twenty twenty. Oh, hello. I think you said uh, seven, eight. I Thought you said a load December. 819 Eastern, 519 Pacific, wow. 619 Mountain. We have to include that now. Yeah. Well, it's it's not really mountain, it's Arizona time. Oh. And I and, and you guys might notice this. I have a slightly energetic dog already. Oh, whoa, well, is he licking there. bang off of your carpet too? He's just uh, it's because temperatures drop below triple digits here in Arizona for the first time in months. Um, so he's like, hey, it's nighttime. Let's play. 99 <laughs> is cool. Yeah. It's actually, it was actually in like the <laughs> mid 70s or something here today. You know, we're coming, like, you know, for the, for those that don't live in this part of the country, um, in oh. about, two, in about two weeks, we're going to get winter for four days. It'll be <laughs> like 30, it'll be like 38 to 45 degrees tops from like December 21st through the 24th. And then it'll be back up in the 80s in two weeks. It's like we get literally four or five days of winter, and that's it. And it's usually the third or fourth week of December. Paulie lives on the planet Tatooine where he, <laughs> watch, he watches like this as the two suns rise. And he wonders, there's got to be more to life than this. Yeah, yeah I know. Someday I'm going to join the rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, the rebellion. <laughs> you will work here for me forever. <laughs> Selling rugs. Hey, I saw your show last week. You were talking with Kermit and Piggy. You know, I have their child down the block. He's a Gamorrean guard. A green pig guy. <laughs> Imagine if Kermit's voice was it. Hi ho, welcome to Watto's uh, used sales place. Come on in here, get grab yourself. Lance for your parts? Yes, I've got them. They're overpriced. <laughs> hey, no. <laughs> it's welcome to Watto's used parts emporium and child sex slave. I see you have another young boy. <laughs> Annie, Annie, come here. Annie. <laughs> Annie. Why are there so many? Kids named Annie. Why do we have so many young boys working here? <laughs> Where is Child Protective <laughs> Services? Yeah, I don't know how the Kermit the Frog Watto thing has now become a thing. <laughs> oh boy! You know what's really funny? So, someone else uh, messaged me. Um, 
you know, I guess I was thinking about that, you know, what if Kermit and Piggy had kids and I came <laughs> up with the Gamorrean guard, but then someone messaged me and said, Oh, Hey man, could you ever look at angry birds? And there are these oh, green, the, green pigs, the pigs. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. Kermit and Piggy's kids. Mm -hmm. And actually there's a star Wars version of that, right? I the think Gamorrean, are... the Gamorrean guards. Yeah. 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 That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Gamorrean guards are just, they're just fat orcs. Basically, <laughs> uh, Mr. Hellstorm 74. Did I watch the LA Guns live stream? I did not. I did is not it real LA Guns or is it the Stephen Riley? LA it, it's yeah, Tracy Guns version. Confused. It's Tracy right. Guns version because I know it's LA I, Guns. Yeah, it's real LA Guns because I saw I saw he was like uh, saying, you know, hey, I'm ready to go on Facebook. We're friends on Facebook, and um, I, I I didn't watch it though. I've, I've got so much going on. In, in a pandemic living alone, I've got so much going on. <laughs> I've got to shampoo my carpets now that they're pink. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So that's, that's going to be stained. I mean, that's... Well, I mean, I was obviously just wiping the shit out of it. But, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that uh, uh, OxyClean. I'll get yeah, OxyClean. Or OxyClean, yeah. Yeah, I have OxyClean. It's, that guy's dead, but that stuff still is remaining. You could clean anything with it. You know, put it in your laundry to get those murder clothes stains out <laughs> clean. Blood comes right off. Jizzy socks. Sure you do. Let Oxy put the power of Oxy behind it and clean up those crusty muffins. Oh, muffins. <laughs> oh, muffins. Mm, yummy. Hello, 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 everybody. Man, we got a lot of people here, and we got executive producers. The big oh, boss. shit. We, we, have, we didn't even do any of the credits yet. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't do anything. The big bosses right now are taking notes that I'll hear about later. Uh, oh, executive man. producers like Charles Green, Joe Christian, Wayne A. Is that Wayne? Oh, Wayno. Wayne. Wayne. Wayne o A. Yeah, Wayno is now an executive producer. That means I work for him now. Great. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was a wino, but I, I, I'm a wino, wino. Uh, Thomas Santiago, music therapy last Ben, Tom, Mike Neese, Frank Corcoran, Michael, the Captain Smith, David Ennis, Dan Halen, and Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. That's Steve Carmichael. Hey, <laughs> our special guest, Steve Carmichael. Yay! Yay! Steve Carmichael, I hear he touches little boys. <laughs> oh, that kid's a child toucher. Oh, 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 Hey, Steve. Uh, yeah, we're 13 minutes in, and, and we're still up to becoming a channel member. <laughs> the whole show's going to be credits. The whole show's going to be the intro. <laughs> this is like the, the, the cold <laughs> open before Saturday Night Live. Sometimes it's the best part of the show. It's always the best part of the show. I was there for six <laughs> years. After that, I lost interest. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it's a podcast also on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and everyone else that uh, made a mistake to uh, to put us on contract. So yeah, to to all the big bosses there, we are we apologize in advance. <laughs> I, I make no apologies for this. <laughs> I make because I have no control over this. I happen to be here in front of my computer. My camera turns on, and suddenly I'm joined by John and John. I'm like, oh, okay. Must be Tuesday night. Yeah, why not? Yeah. It is okay. I'll do it. Okay. Well, how much does it pay? Ha-ha. <laughs> Head for the hills, Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> I love that photo so much. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just need like a little piece of black wax for that little yeah. space well you know here's the funny thing wayno uh uh channel member or producer executive producer remembers when i had that space he's known me long enough that i had that space when i had the false tooth that we always knew that bad shit was about to happen when the tooth came out like that oh. was if we were, there was going to be a fight because i wasn't going to i told the story on saturday on uh, saturday night it was like a retainer you know i lost the tooth wrestling in high school 
So it was like a retainer. You know how like you have a retainer with a little plastic in the back? Well, it's basically uh-huh. a tooth. They call it a flipper. Right. Um, and before I got my bridge work taken care of, I used to have the flipper because I was still boxing and, and playing pro, uh, uh, college football. So it was like, you know, why bother paying all that money for this dental work if it could get shattered again? <coughs> I just had the plastic tooth. So we always knew when bad shit was going down, the tooth came out. So I, had, I was missing a tooth. It was very attractive. <laughs> you'd, go, you'd go to your buddy. You're like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Hey, hold my tooth. Kind of. It's like it's like almost that hold my beer moment, you know, yeah. or like hold my glasses. Paul's like, hold my, hold my tooth. The worst part about it is we would we <laughs> we lived together. It was it was me, Wayno, and uh, and two strippers. That's a bad part. Yes, if only if, that Wayno was there with you. Anybody that knows anything that knows anything about strippers is they're fun <laughs> to look at, not easy to live with. Um, well, they're all psychos or single yes. moms or psycho yeah, single they, moms. They, but they pay their they pay their rent in cash, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I would be drinking heavily, which I am want to do on occasion, um, sometimes you'd wake up and you'd find my my tooth because I would take it out at night in case I had to. <laughs> um, I would take it out, and you'd, sometimes you keep it in a glass of water, like dentures and all that shit. But there were there were occasional mornings where I'd wake up the next morning to get a cup of coffee and open up the sugar bowl, and I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> Went to. <the> <laughs> 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 you, you look and you you crack up a couple of ice cubes for your drink and you see it floating in one you're like oh fuck How well it was also fun to do at parties because i could i could take my tongue in the back of the flipper and make the tooth dance so we we would be drinking wow. and, I, and i'd turn wow. and look at somebody i'd look at somebody and the tooth would go and go back in and they'd go what just happened and i go what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I'll bet that guy gives great head. Yeah, let me ask him after a few more shots. <laughs> um, no, yeah, Wayno brings up a good point. It was literally right out of, and that's why when I watched The Client of the Western Civilization, I thought, well, that movie is a balls-on accurate documentary. The chicks didn't get in the house unless they brought a bag of food. That is a true fucking story. That didn't just happen on the L.A. Strip. That happened in every band house everywhere across America. Any guys that were in a band that lived together if they had girlfriends or girlfriends, they always brought food over because they'd come into the house once, look around, and go, oh, my God, you guys need help. Because we spent all of our money on rent, rehearsal space rent, gear, and food in that order. It was, it was you had to be able to have a roof over your head. You had to be able to afford the rehearsal space. You had to be able to afford drumsticks, drum heads, guitar strings, a new PA head, whatever it was. Food was fourth on the list of important shit. So it was always mm-hmm. the girls brought the food to the house it's a great thing <laughs> <laughs> paulie mike nee says you could also be an excellent double to the great actor and voice james harder who played big fig newton i don't know who that is you know you remember the big fig commercials in the 1970s and 80s there, was, there was a guy that there was a guy dressed as, as a giant fig you know, and and he was like, right. hey, "Hey, Fig Newtons," and you know, Johnny, okay. Google Google Big Fig, get an image up. All right, because you you kind of remind me of him a bit. I get, uh, I obviously get the um, Ernest Borgnine, of the course. Ernest Borgnine one. Um, sure. Yesterday, when I got my hair cut, I had it pulled back in a higher top knot, so it looked like the Undertaker. I um, saw that. Yeah, uh, I get Jack Black a lot for whatever reasons. I'm not quite as round as Jack, but. I understand why that person, comes. You know what it is? Personality. I, I've worked with him. His personality wise, you're you have that, you know, oh, that's that attitude good. of yeah, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. I've never met him. I I'm, you know, I'm sure he and I would get along great. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I could see that. Um, but yeah, I get that on occasion. I've had meatloaf when I was fatter. That I could I've see. Too. I, you know, hey, fat guy, long hair, meatloaf. Yeah, automatically. Uh, Okay. Yeah, here's Steve Stews. Oh, that's nice. That's a that's good. <laughs> that's um, <big> fig. <laughs> I used to get Steve Souza from Exodus too. Hi, I'm Big Fig. Big Fig, huh? Right. Yeah, and look, he's on the package. If you if you zoom in on the package to the left of the logo, you see he's uh, there's a little big fig right there. There he is. I hate I hate Fig Newtons. Oh, but but you know, you look you look in the in the costume, you look dynamite. I'll take the look. I'll take the paycheck. If Johnny, Fig Newtons are still looking for a new spokesperson, Johnny, do you have a full body image of, of him in the costume? Oh, so we're going back. We're basically going back to the Grinch outfit. 
<laughs> no, I, I mean Big Fig. I want I want to see this. It's oh, like, is he... oh yeah, think... he's he's like a big fig. Uh, yeah, he's a, that's why his name Big Fig. <laughs> yes, thanks, John. Welcome to the conversation. <laughs> he's got a gay brother, but I won't talk about him either. It's... There he is, gay fig. No, it's, it's, he's shaped like a butt <laughs> plug, wow. like a green butt yeah, plug. There yeah, you that's go. Not good. <laughs> so Mike Neese just called me fat. Is what he did. Oh jeez, man. Oh no. <laughs> By the way, uh, as long as we're talking eighties metal, <laughs> <laughs> score this you... week. I haven't found this. This was a tough one to find on CD. Uh, what is that? Y and T. That's an early Y and T. No, it's older Y. Well, it's Y and T live. This was supposed to be their farewell tour after the 10 CD uh, when the original lineup broke up. Oh, um, cool. And yet and yet, none of the big hits are on. I mean, none of the, 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 the popular hits are on there. This is like all like Mean Streak and Black Tiger and shit like that, which is cool. Doesn't have Summertime Girls on it, even though really? it was released after Summertime Girls. Doesn't have Go for the Throne on it. Mean Streak, have, like, what, mean Streak was an early big one for them, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but this was, this was right after... This doesn't have like I see how it's got the In Rock We Trust backstage pass on the back of it. Yeah, there's there's very little stuff from In Rock We Trust on here. Like none of the none of the hits are on this. It's like it's like literally they went back and they were. Let me pull out the cheaters. Um, they went back into the catalog and they grabbed stuff like I mean, Don't Stop Running's on here, Mean Streak, Hurricane, but like Struck Down is on here, Winds of Change is on here, Black Tiger, Midnight in Tokyo, like older stuff. Beautiful Dreamer, Hard Times is newer. A lot I'll of deep cry. cuts. Uh, yeah, I'll cry. I believe in you. Squeeze and forever. I mean, there's not like none of the hits. How, I was about to say, how do you them. not have Summertime Girls? Because that's the big one. Or 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 Rock and Roll is going to save the world, which was a which was a huge part of their concerts during that period of time. So yeah, it doesn't have Rescue Me on it. Or oh, does it have Rescue Me? Did I say it had Rescue Me on it? I don't think so. I mean, really, uh, a, 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 it's an interesting Y&T live album. Tough to find. Uh, it's on Metal Blade. Uh, so, Metal Blade and Priority. Are they, good, are, they good, are they good live on that one? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, Y&T's always good live. But oh, I have... Go ahead. Arena, Arena says XYZ is way better than Y&T. Which would you rather have, XYZ or Y&T? Y&T every time. I actually, I actually would choose XYZ. I got to agree with him. Nope, Y and T. I lo I love Y and T. I think they're a great band. I love I Y and T, but those first two X Y Z albums were killer. Yeah, but, but Y and T has like half a dozen great records. And then after um, they started putting out their own stuff, this is kind of a neat thing. If you're a Y and T fan, they're tough to find. But and Dave Menachetti's a great dude, and I, I like that too. But Y and T put out these like unearthed, like from the vaults collections from way back when. Um, oh, cool! Yeah, these are cool. They're they're tough to find. Um, so they're, they're they're like a reissue series. Well, no, it's they they basically they have their own um, their own label production company. Menachetti basically took over the catalog um, and went and grabbed a bunch of stuff from like years past demos and alternate releases and unreleased albums. Because let's face it, Y and T, I mean, third level. When, if we're being honest, you know, yeah, yeah the sure, and the, sure. I mean, if we're being honest, um, not not on the C list, they're on the C list, yeah, not. I mean, you know, as much as I love the band and as, and as hard working as they are, uh, and, and as long as they've been around, they've been around for 40 years, um, never really outside of summertime girls, never really popped, yeah, ne yeah. never really happened for them. That was they their, were that was their biggest one, summertime, they girls. were they were like Night Ranger. And and even less so. Night Ranger was even bigger than Y&T. Night, Night Ranger had it way bigger with Sister yes. Chris, and that video was always on. Yeah, I mean that was it was a it was Y&T just a good blue collar hard rock band that never really they're like the they're like the hard rock cheap trick. <clears throat> they had a moment. It was quick, um, and and they they still put out consistently good music, uh, but the audience that's aware of them is the only audience that cares. They're not a band that ever really broke through mainstream big time, which sucks because they're 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 a pretty good band. They're you know, it's, very really, good band. it's really funny you mentioned. And by the way, Jimmy Carr is in the chat. Jimmy uh, Carr. Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr. Uh, hey, Jimmy. Um, no, it, it's funny you mentioned Cheap Trick because I never got 
the love of cheap trick. Not that they're bad. They're, they're fine. They're just right. kind of mediocre to me, but right. some people give them such a big following. And, and when I, when I say a big following, all I can remember their biggest hit was surrender and maybe the flame. But like, other than that, like I, I never saw them as such a big band that like everyone just has this big thing for cheap trick. Dream I, police. I got it. Dream yeah, police. Budokan is a massive record. They, I mean, it's, it's, when did that yeah. come out? Budokan seven, 76, 77. 76? That's yeah. when they were the biggest. When the flame came out, it was like they're still kind of that here. That was the eighties. That was no, the, the, the flame. The flame was a the flame was a comeback for them. They didn't even want to do that song. They hated yeah. doing that. Yeah, um, but they were they were bigger <laughs> with, with, in seventy six. With, with, with hell yeah, with no, the dream dream police. Heaven tonight. All those. Heaven tunes. tonight is a great record. Uh, in color is a great record. Um, I I happen to like Cheap Trick a lot, um, but I understand what John is saying. He's right, Cheap Trick is a lot like YNT. The people that are into them, really into them, um, and the people that aren't into them, they know, I want you to want me, Dream Police, That's Surrender, known. and The Flame. They had some yeah. songs. Meanwhile, yeah, they did I a cover. You want me to. Meanwhile, they did a cover of, of Don't Be Cruel that was a huge hit. Uh, they had a song called If You Want My Love, You've Got It. They had another song called She's Tight that was big. They did the, the they did the theme song to uh, that. I gotta listen to that one. Maybe maybe if I listen to that one again, I'll uh, I'll be more into it. They did mm -hmm. they did the theme song to that '70s show. I mean, they were yeah. They were, Cheap Trick is a sneaky band. I, I always compare Collective Soul to Cheap Trick, and that is nobody stayed up late to buy a Cheap Trick album at midnight. Like nobody yeah. in their in their you know. But if you grab their greatest hits, you go fuck. I love every song on this record. They had more hits than you think. They're a sneaky band. Um, but I understand what you're saying, John. Uh, people that love them, love them. People that don't, they just sort of pass them by. And there's a reason why you only hear two of their songs on the radio. Yeah, the I mean, like, and, and I want you to want me. I hear a following for them in the same way I do like Aerosmith. And Aerosmith, I love, and I, I, could, right. tell, I could think of 10 hits off the top of my head that I just love and, you know, constantly hear. You know? Cheap Trick is is the American Thin Lizzy. You know, people that like Thin Lizzy, That's interesting, love Thin Lizzy or UFO. You know what I mean? There are there are bands that people love that they follow um, that sort of bubble under under the surface. And Cheap Trick was one of those bands. And they certainly, having been around for as long as they have, they still they're still fantastic live. Um, you know, Rick Nielsen, one of the more underrated guitar players of his time of all time. Um, he's up there with Joe Walsh and Mark Knopfler and a couple of those other guys that you and, don't necessarily think of as great guitar players. And talk about a guitar collection. Yes. Oh, mass, massive guitar collection. I mean, <laughs> guitar we, we, should have, him. we should have him. <laughs> we should have him do show and tell every week. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a hammer that has my head on it. Yeah. yeah right. No, I mean, his, his guitars are fantastic. Well, he 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 contacted me. He wants to buy the Mama Kuda double neck, and uh, I said that's, my <laughs> that's actually my mother. It's not a guitar. It's my mother. You can't have her. <laughs> uh, Rena Spinkle actually asked any opinion on the band Lion. I love Lion. Oh, um, Doug Doug Aldrich. Yeah, I'm a huge Doug Aldrich fan. I love. Yeah. I, mean, I own all. Of, I own all of his Burning Rain music. I think Burning Rain is a cool band. Again, if you know about them and you like them, great. Nobody else is ever going to hear a burning. There, there's another hidden band, though. I mean, you you didn't see Lion get airplay or on MTV much. I mean, they were like, you know, maybe once in a blue moon on a Headbangers Ball episode, but they didn't they didn't get a lot of airplay. But I love Doug Aldrich. Right there, look at him. He, he's like prepped for that. He he probably gave like the, the audience like, "Hey, ask about this." Ask no, about no. <laughs> Here's the thing about this. I don't have the actual album. This is it's funny. I'm 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 an asshole like this. All of my CDs, as you know, are are well organized alphabetically in order of release. You know that kind of shit. But because my Lion CD is a burn. Oh, you have it separate. It, I have it separate. I don't, it's, so it's it's over here with my random like bootlegs and burns and stuff like That's that. Because for whatever reason, it hasn't earned a place in the actual <laughs> library. Right now, Doug is like, ah, fuck, fuck. I want to hey, get Doug, that shelf. Send me the actual record if I can find. If I could find this CD for less than a hundred dollars on fucking eBay, I would yeah. buy it. And even if, and, and I might even still great. buy it. That's got to be rare. Fine. 
It's a tough I record got, to find. I got mine secondhand like years and years ago, and it was just one of those, oh, this is cool, you know? One of those tough I, albums to find in a store, uh, just like anything from Nuclear Assault. Nobody trades those records in. I bought those originally, so. <clears throat> Another Royal Spill! <laughs> You know what's really funny? Since 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 we did the Kermit, you no, know, we're gonna talk, take a lot of shit for putting a blues part on a thrash album. <laughs> right, sorry. Since, since no worries. Since we did the uh, the Kermit thing last week, all week I don't know I don't know why I've just been singing in my head Operation Mind Crime with Kermit and Piggy. <laughs> like, like, like you know, like, you know, you know what? No, because you know how I we remember like, now. I don't remember song, doing... random song, random song, random song. <laughs> no, now, like for a price, I do about anything except pull the trigger. For that, I need a pretty good cause. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you just see like Fozzie as Doctor X, and you know, here, here, putting down two guns in front of him. Uh, <laughs> well, giving their secretary the slam. They're all in penthouse now. Or Playboy magazine, million dollar stories to tell. <laughs> the four hole was wrong. Fifteen minutes long. <laughs> no, and, then, and then and then Piggy is Mary. You know, blood of Christ can heal my wounds so deep. <laughs> See, here's the worst part about that. Every time anybody mentions Mary from Operation Mind Crime, I think of the song "Sweet Sister Mercy" from Lynch Mob. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, because you have Sweet Sister Mary and Sweet Sister Mer, and, and I, so so that I guess that's a good thing. It's like a Pavlovian response there because they're both great <laughs> fucking records. I I I mean, literally, Mind Crime is one of my all time top favorite albums. Like, literally, in my top five, probably my top three, easily my top three. Actually, Do you have all I, the live crimes and all that shit too. The opera. I got, I got all, I fed into all that shit. I mean, I, I kept seeing them live when they were performing the whole thing. You know, I was like, you know, really early in the in the front rows when like yeah. they were performing the whole thing at once. And like that first time, I remember seeing Jeff Tate disappear off stage when they're you know doing um, Eyes of a Stranger. And and you're like, where is he? Where is he? And then you look on the screen and he's running at you and diving through the screen. I was like, oh my god! Yeah, I was like, like obsessed with it. It's such a you good know, album. Jeff Tate is playing here in Phoenix. Um, there, there's a bar here in town called the Marquee Theater. It's right off uh, the, the Loop 202 in Tempe, <clears throat> right across from Tempe Town Lake. I know we have lakes in Phoenix. Go figure. Um, but I saw it, I was going by and the, and the marquee at the marquee said, Jeff Tate, 30th anniversary of empire. <clears throat> so I guess he's going to do the record. He's going to do the entire record, um, which I guess he got in the, in the, in the settlement. Um, but he yeah. is coming to town. I think I, th let's see in the settlement, he's the only one allowed to perform mm -hmm. operation Mind Crime. Mind Crime in its entirety. Yes. The, the, start the, the, the band that won the because that's also the name of his band is Operation Mind Crime. But um the band Queens Right can do select cuts, they can't do the whole thing. So which which to be honest with you, uh, I don't know that um I don't know that people outside of the Uber fan really want to hear the entire mind crime record. Oh, I, I do, baby. I do. Yeah, but but it's the that but you're the Uber fan. Yeah, <clears> oh absolutely. Like, Mind crime could fill if he, if if Tate and look if they reunite different story we're talking about a different different level of, of sure. attraction um, but but mind crime can fill a twenty five hundred seat theater at best doing the entire show and he would have to do it like a Broadway stage performance it would have to be you know Rocky Horror style or you know what I mean it would have to be a whole big production they were the going. They were they were dancing around with that, uh, making it into a play, making it into a movie. I mean, right. they they, they should have. They really should have. As a movie, that would have been fantastic. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's you know, it would be a, and and the comparisons are are legitimate to the Pink Floyd's The Wall. It really is yeah. the wall of the of the eighties. It was, and I was. We've talked about this before on the show. I loved early Queens and Rage for Order was like, uh-oh, I don't know if they, I think they might have, they might have shot their load. It might be over for them. And then when Mind Crane came out, I was fucking, my head exploded. I was like, wow, had yeah. no idea this band was capable of something this brilliant. 
Um, I didn't know what it was. I mean, I obviously I bought the new album. I sat in my car. I, I parked somewhere and I, I said, all right, I'm, I'm dedicating an hour. I put it in. I yep. start with the liner notes. Mm. And then I realized as I'm going along, oh, my God, this is a story. Holy shit. It's a concept album. Right. And then I was just like, <gasps> this is the greatest thing ever in my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> That was it. <laughs> I was doing a I was doing a metal show on in a college radio station, Framingham, Massachusetts, at Framingham State, um, and we got the record in. And I was in like the production room organizing some sort of shit, and just put the needle on the record. And like three songs into it, I sat down. I stopped doing what I was doing. I just sat down and pulled out the the, the, the black liner notes. Uh, the liner notes and just read along with the whole story. It was yeah. like it was my first like book on tape. That I actually sat and read along to the whole story. Um, and it was so, so amazing. I mean, it, it, you know, <clears throat> and the sad part is, uh, you know, if you can do that once, why can't you do it again? Because Empire, as cool as it was, <clears throat> obviously wasn't the same. And then they had the, the law of diminishing returns um, for a while, even though things like, you know, Promised Land and, and that stuff was okay. Um, yeah. But they certainly. You know, here and my, now for this year yeah, and, I mean, I mean, the EP was phenomenal. The warning was phenomenal. Rage for Order sort of dipped a little bit. They came back with Mind Crime, and obviously, Empire actually outsold Mind Crime, which is fucking yeah. weird to me. Uh, well, you then know Empire, and then after Empire, you know, they got killed by the power ballad, like everyone else. Empire, Once Silent Blue City happening, it was over. Empire was a great follow up to Mind Crime because mm -hmm. you, you know you're saying, oh my god, this is the greatest thing in the world. How are they going to yep. follow it up? And yep. they came out with Empire, and yep. that for that first song is just driving. Yep. Yep. Bam, 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 one, of, bam, one of my favorite, bam, bam, one of my favorite I mean, Queens Rex songs of all time. Yeah, I mean, how are you not pumping your fist in the air or up someone's ass? I mean, whatever you're doing, you know, you got to do it to that rhythm. It's just such a driving no, I, melody. It's like. And I think Best I Can was probably the best song they could ever open their shows with. It just, it, it pounds the way it's supposed to pound. It's got a great hook. It's, I mean, it's, it's the essence of Queensryche. Best I Can from the Empire record is, for me, one of the top five Queensryche songs of all time. It's is a that what they opened song. with when you saw them uh, on the Empire tour? I don't remember what they opened when I saw them. When I saw the Building Empires tour, they they started with Empire, and I remember it very distinctly because it was Madison Square Garden. The place is totally sold out, and it starts off with Empire, and the lighting is going to the left, you know, with East Side and left and right, West Side, right. and sure. you know, and they're doing that. And Jeff's mic was was bailing out on him, so they they just stopped and they're like, "All right, we're gonna fix this. We'll start again." And then everyone's just like. Wow, that sucks. Because <laughs> it was like so energetic. And then, like, you know, the room goes dark 10 minutes later. You just hear, you know, the 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 voicemail, and you know, all of a sudden, dun, 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 and then we're back on track. But I remember specifically that's what they opened with during the Building Empires tour. At least, at least when, when I saw them in New York. Yeah, I'm still, I mean, I I when when the when the Empire record came out, I was still on the high of mind crime and it's really weird when you when you put out a record like that sort of like van halen's 1984 motley Cruz, dr feel good now the bar is set at a level where your expectations are unreasonable not many bands put out a black album or a back in black or anything like that so for example i'll use kid rock as an example only because it's something really completely unrelated unrelated yeah <laughs> and because it's a great example okay <clears throat> So Devil Without a Cause comes out, all right, which is the one with Ba with the Ba and, and Only God Knows Why and Bull God and, you know, the big, the big fucking queen, uh, Kid Rock record. <clears throat> and it sells 11 million copies. And then the follow-up only <laughs> sells 4 million copies. And you say to yourself, any record that sells 4 million <laughs> copies should be a high-water mark for any band. <laughs> yeah. But because uh -oh. a band... Yeah, because a band put out a record like that before. So so no matter what Empire did after Mind Crimes, they were sort of going to be screwed. And then everything after that, you know, nobody cared. It, On the, it, from, from a mass appeal audience, nobody cared after after Empire. I'm excuse yeah. me. Yeah, after Empire. I mean, you're you're also getting into that, you know, death throes of, you know, now you're in the 90s. 
Yeah. Because you know? I what when was when was let's see, Empire was eighty eight. No, no, no. Mind crime was eighty eight. Mind crime? Empire was ninety. John Bale. Yeah, you're right. No, no, no. Jay Hannon. Right. right. No. <laughs> Jay Hannon in the chat of the great band Gizmachi. Uh someone someone told me, uh, hey, why is your why is your friend's band name Jiz Munchie? And I'm like, well, uh, uh, no, no, it's Gizmachi. Are you I, kidding me? That's or, that's his porn Giz, parody. Jay just Giz, took that down. Giz, He's like, I'm doing Giz, that. Gizmucho? Gizmucho? No, no, that's his cousin. No, no. Gizmachi. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you something, because uh, I wanted to talk about this live on the air. It is, Jay has a great new single. Have you guys heard this? Not to get off Queensryche, but to take a, a one-minute moment to, like, acknowledge this. The new Gizmachi mm -hmm. single is fucking phenomenal. It's fun to have friends in bands, um, and it's even more fun when your friends' bands are good. Yeah, like it's you know when you don't have to lie. It's fun <laughs> when your band's friends suck. That's pretty fun too. That is fun too. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but it, it would really suck if if like Jay, who's like really getting into producing and stuff, and you know, and all of a sudden he comes out with the single, and and he's you know on the air and he's promoting it, and he's got the rest of the band, and then he's like, hey, yeah, everyone, listen to this, and then he puts it on, and everyone's like, oh fuck, what do we tell him? What do we tell him? You know, it's like, you know, but luckily that we're not in that position. <laughs> I had that moment. We we went to. I think I've told this story. I don't know if it was Strategy Night Live or or on this show. I Sunday went to morning. The, yeah, Live. I went to the Saint Anger listening party in San Francisco. Metallica, <clears throat> Q Prime uh, rented like these this amazing hotel suite, and there were like twenty five people um, and like two dozen Oakland Raiders and like you know friends and industry people and all that shit. And we're in downtown San Francisco. No girls. Beautiful, no, no women anywhere. <laughs> 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 not for you my friend not for you so we're we're sitting in the room and we listen you know the, the the record company guy goes hey guy named george super cool guy he goes uh hey we're gonna listen to the new um, metallica record here we go and he hits play and everybody's quiet for an hour you know we're listening to the record after every song you know everybody it's funny nobody wants to talk between the songs we're all listening to the songs and the songs end, and it's an opportunity for somebody to say something. We all go. <laughs> That's when you hear a cough. Yeah, and and then and then you know, and everyone, and even if the even if the can is empty, like this one is now, I gotta go grab another one. But like, if it's empty, you're just like, please yeah, let just the next pretend, song, just fake let, it. Let the next song start, so I don't have to talk to it. <laughs> so the next song starts, and everybody's like, you know, so now the whole record ends. And George gets up in front of everybody and goes, so, oh, what do you guys think? There's a cleaning woman in the background mopping. He's sucky dick. <laughs> no, he's no good. He's no, no. Mr. Mr. Metallica, no good. He Mr. No good. Mr. <laughs> Talent, Mr. Talent, no home. Mr. Mr. Metallica, no good. He's no good. <laughs> so, and, well, and everybody's like room. Anal. And everybody in the room, and the good part about it is, you should have had one of these. Yeah. So between between every song, you could be like, drop the bomb, drop the bomb. <laughs> uh, it was so it was so awkward. And thankfully, there was a show at the Fillmore that night, so we like we could we could just wash that shit away. Uh, something else. <laughs> no, it was Metallica. It was those <laughs> Fillmore shows. Oh no! Do we have to hear those songs again? Oh, Come on! Was the tough, no, if you thought the record was rough, try listening to it for the first time in a club. Oh no! And, it and was all, the, so all awesome. the audience, they open with "Seek and Destroy," and the audience oh. is like this, and they then they go into "Saint Anger," and it's like, yeah, where's the bar? Where's the bar? I'm gonna need a. I'm gonna need to line up shots for this. No, it was it was uh, it was awkward. It was one of the most awkward moments of, of so getting back to Gizmachi because that's really where this all started and where it should have stayed. Yeah. Um, it's good to have uh, a friend's band that puts out quality music. Now, uh, full disclosure, it is not 80s style music. It is fucking heavy, um, yeah. but it's it's good heavy. And but if you like good. that, yeah, if you like that, look, you know, we've said this before. Slayer is heavy as fuck, but it's great. You know, Rage Against the Machine, heavy as fuck, but it's great. Good songs. If you got good songs. It doesn't matter the aggressive nature of the record. A good song is a good song, and these guys are making good records. So um, I'm hoping that, that that the record pops for them. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, you, you always want your friends to succeed, 
you know, and and then they don't become your friends, you know, then, then they don't want to be your friends. They're like Mancuda, no, no, he's not allowed, but he's got a backstage pass. Confiscate it. Just you know, sorry, son. Huh? What? Oh no, that's that's <laughs> you. You know that's that's the case. I'm sure we all have friends who have. Sounds like it. some of those nam some some of those nam parties we tried to get into. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We have friends who made it and then suddenly they don't remember you. They're like, yeah. hey, what the fuck, man? You slept on my couch. I like, don't remember yeah. any of my old friends. <laughs> I, I, had, I had that with uh, I didn't see them. I had that I had that with Will Forte from uh, SNL. We we started on SNL the same day. So he's like the new kid of the cast, and I'm the new kid of of the uh, the featured extras. And you know, we were just hanging a lot, and we walk we walk out of the studio together. We chat a lot on the way home. Blah 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 blah. Anyway, so years late, and and you know, this was for years. I was there for six years. He was there for about the same time. Flash forward, Comic Con, like I don't know, ten years later, and he's like got this new show. Um, I don't know, end of the world or so. Last man on earth, last man on earth. And he's having a panel. So I'm like, oh, I'll wait, I'll wait backstage for him. I'll say hi, blah, blah, blah. So I wait backstage for him. I see him coming up. And he's like, hey, hey, hi. Hey. He's like, I got to do this interview, but then, then we'll catch up. I'm like, yeah, sure, great. So I wait for him to do this interview. And he just walks with his entourage past me, like mm -hmm. looking right at me. He just walks right by me. Not like, hey, come with me or, hey, let's grab lunch later or let's do that. Nothing like that. I was just like, uh, 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 and I just saw the friendship like, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, just another one of my friends that like achieved massive success. Some of my friends are like, hey, Mancuda, you know, I got a project. Let me let me give you a leg up. Let me I'll throw you something on there. You know, some friends do that, you know, but like then you have those friends that are like Mancuda who and I, you know, uh, just I like that. have a similar I have it. a similar story, but it goes the other way, which is a guy that I was friends with. Um, uh, went on to be the lead singer in one of the biggest bands in the world and then was no longer the lead singer for the biggest band in the world, one of the biggest bands in the world. And I ran into him at the Saddle Ranch um, right there. The <laughs> no, I no, know. actually. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So I have an idea. Yeah, it's it's that guy. So we're, sit <laughs> we're, we're sitting in the Saddle Ranch. It's me, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles for, and for those that don't know in the chat, uh, I do a morning radio program. Um, and I've been doing radio for like 30 years, um, 35 actually. And, and I'm in Los Angeles for a record release, uh, a record listening party for another legendary band who will, I'm not going to name drop them, but I'm there for seeing a really big band. It's all over. So we're at the saddle ranch getting drunk. It's me and two of my buddies. And we see this crowd of girls around this guy that had like, it looked like macaroni and cheese in the top of his hair. His hair was sort of frosted. Um, and uh, and we're like, look at this asshole. What the hell's going? Look at this. What the fuck is going over? And I went, Gary. And it's Gary Sharon. <laughs> and Gary, Gary, and I have been friends since the '80s. I mean, he, he and Nuno used to come up to my college radio show before they were signed and shit. So I walk over to talk to him, like, "Hey, Gary, what's up?" He's like, "Hey, man." Like we hadn't seen each other in years. Hey, man, what's up? Total opposite of your Will Forte story. What's up, man? What the hell are you doing in L.A.? I'm like, well, I was here for this thing, blah, 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 blah. Fuck, man, don't go anywhere. I'll be right out. I'll, I'll see you outside. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go outside, and I'm hanging with a couple of my friends. I go, hey, well, I guess Gary and I are going to catch up. He comes walking out, um, and he he opens up. He's wearing like a, a, a blazer, and he opens up a blazer, and he goes, can you believe this shit? How Los Angeles is this? This girl gave me her headshot. She didn't give me her phone number. She gave me her fucking headshot with her contact information on the back of it. I've actually had that happen yeah, in, L so she, in L.A. I've in had L.A. at the Saddle Ranch, this girl gives Gary Sharon, instead of giving her a number, a number, it gives her a fucking headshot. So long story short, um, Gary goes, come on, we're going out. And suddenly it's me and Gary like we're hanging out in Boston again. It's the other side of that story. A guy who went on to become fucking huge. Um, and then this was right before the Tribe of Judah record came out. So I had a chance. I've got like a burn of the Tribe of Judah record that he gave me. He's like, hey, you can't play this for anybody. I'm like, don't worry. Nobody wants to hear it. 
Um, <laughs> not after that. Not after that Van Halen debacle. Yeah. Well, that's so. Oh. Years later, we continue. We continue to joke about this. He's got a great band with his brother called Hurt Smile. They have two albums out. They're fucking great. You should check them out if you don't own them. If you haven't had a chance to hear them, the band what, is what, it, what is it? Herpes Smile. Yes. Herpes, ah. Hurt Smile, and um, I told Gary about a story, and I think I might have told this story before too, where. Um, all the bands in Boston after Extreme got signed, they all tried to sound like Extreme. So my band at the time, and Wayne will back it up, we wrote a song called Riding the Tails, and it was about all of the bands in Boston that changed to sound like Extreme. So I told Gary I had written this song. He goes, oh, send it to me. Maybe I can help you you know, get it published to put it on a record or something. And I wrote back to him. I emailed him. I go, no, thanks. You already fucked up Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> and I get the email back. It says, oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> You so can the, never make it up, but you can buy me dinner. No, he's what a solid fucking human being. Just a good dude. So yeah. it's it's the other side of your real forte story where you yeah, got yeah. a guy that you were friends with. They go on to be fucking massive. Now, to in, in to be fair, Gary Sharon is the only member of Van Halen that has to buy a ticket to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But he was in Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> and he holds that over me all the time. He goes, hey. I was the lead singer for your favorite band. You know what's you, funny Gary. is John. Uh, I just saw John Karabi in a refrigerator box under the bridge by my house, and he was saying the same thing. He was uh, holding up a sign. Used to be the lead singer of Motley Crue. Please help. And you know, you know what? Karabi's doing just fine. He's doing all right. He that guy. He's one of those guys that he's a cockroach man. He always finds work. Talented dude. I like John. I, I like him, and and you know, for that matter, I mean, I joke, but you know, I like Gary also. Right. But um, but it's it's just funny. It's just like these guys that were like, you know, again, Ripper Owens, and you know, yeah. all these guys that were fronting like the big bands of our days. Yeah. And and once they're out, it's just like, yeah, oh, thank God, Vince is back, and it's like, I I, I was I was I was uh, for a year. I was in. The, I did an album with Motley Crue. Look, it, that's me yeah. in, in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, no matter how many times, of... no matter how many times um, people give Gary shit, and Gary does this to Nuno all the time, sort of in the same way that that Gene fucks with Paul Stanley and Kiss. Gary always says <laughs> to Nuno, he goes, "I sang for your favorite band because Van Halen was <laughs> Nuno's favorite band coming up." Um, and he goes, "He goes, no matter what you do, I sang for your favorite band." And Nuno's like, <laughs> <laughs> "Like it's such a great ball buster." <laughs> That's thing. very funny. I, you know, I mean, look, when you've got so get, getting back to Gizmachi, let's hope that somebody in Gizmachi replaces somebody in Megadeth. <laughs> <laughs> now, no, I hope, I, I hope they do well. I hope. I mean, look, I want Gizmachi to do well. I want I want our friend Jay to do well. Um, based he's a based on that, he's a horrible father, but a good dude. Oh, terrible parent. Oh. <laughs> a terrible husband too. But I mean, yeah, but, I mean. But, but, I mean Hi, Ellie. Ellie. I'm a single. I used to, yeah, I know, really. Yeah. Hey, Ellie, maybe you want to work on land speeders for me, huh? Get away from the Hannon house. Uh, come hey, work at Tatooine. Ah. Hey, Ellie, how would you like to come and work at a used parts store? Oh, I just clicked all over my, all over my mic. Yeah. By the way, for those for those that uh, didn't didn't recognize what I was actually doing on the uh, on the intro of our show, I wasn't uh, blowing Paulie or going on a crusty <laughs> sock hunt under my bed. Um, I actually had spilled just as we were about to go live. I spilled half a can of Bang Energy drink all <laughs> over my fucking carpet, which is white. So, which is white. So, let me just point out this. This this happens to be a day that I'm drinking Bang Energy Drink Strawberry Blast, which let me point out, this is one of two commemorative Bang flavors, Purple Kittles and Strawberry Blast, made exclusively for our U.S. military. So oh, how cool. about that? They are they these are sold at the military uh, stores and for military families. So Bang Energy Drink supporting our troops, which I am very very supportive of. Anyone who's a veteran or, or active service military, very big fans of. Uh, so two exclusive flavors, purple Kittles and all over my floor, delicious pink and red strawberry blast, which blasted all over my fucking carpet. So, yeah, it's uh, it's now got 
uh, pink and jizz stains all over the carpet, which is great. Thank you, Bang Energy Drink, for fucking up my house. That should be the that there should be a, a thumbnail with you holding the can. It says Bang Energy Drink all over my fucking carpet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between that and sperm, I mean, oh. it's a it's a black light Hi, delight. <laughs> it's a black light delight. So yeah. Uh, anyway, back to Gizmachi. Um, am I am I crazy? Uh, did they get a new frontman? They they're using a new singer now, right? I don't know enough about the band to give you that. That, Jay? that would be a Jay Hannon question. Jay Hannon in the chat. Are you guys using a new singer, or is it me? Is it you? Because, see, remember, when, when Gizmachi first came out, Jay had the douche dreads, and now he doesn't anymore. So Right. Yeah. So things change, I, so I don't, I don't know if it's the difference. I, don't I think know the enough bass about player that. is the singer. Right? The bass player is the singer. I think they're using a different frontman in this track, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, we'll find out in a second. If Jay is oh. paying attention. or unless yeah. he already Jay, put Jay, just la Jay just left. He's like, I chimed in. That's all I need for this show. It's Bacon Jr., <laughs> Oh, who knew? Bacon <laughs> Jr. By the way, uh, you can't go wrong chat. with bacon. Professional idiot question from the chat. Thoughts on the band Damn Yankees? Damn Yankees are awesome. I, I was like right. both records. Mm -hmm. Soil, soil yeah. work, Bjorn. Bjorn Strid. Right. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, and he sounds terrific. And and again, this I, I have to distinguish this because you know a lot of bands that do J style music use Cookie Monster vocals. This guy's not singing Cookie Monster; he's singing rough and raspy, yeah. but it's not. Oh, no, 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 it's, no, not yeah. it's not that you know that the yeah. six feet under guttural, that growly that you can't <clears throat> understand it. He's melodic and he's rich and he's got that deep guttural kind of growl, sort of, sort good. of, sort of Anselmo ish, you know. Or, Elmo? Uh, Elmo? <laughs> He's sort of like Elmo? <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> Reed Bloom. Reed Bloom. Hey, that tickles. <laughs> Respect. Work. Are you talking to me? <laughs> um, Elmo, Elmo, new singer of Gizmachi. <laughs> I always thought Soil Work got sort of a, a rough deal because <laughs> at the same time Soil Work came out, there was the band Soil. Um, I soil who, my pants. Uh, and Soil Soil had some moments, but there's another great example of a band not being able to keep a lineup together and just becoming an afterthought. Um, but the band Soil, soil has some good stuff, too. There's a great song called Halo, if you've ever said. Again, sounds very Pantera-ish. Halo! Halo! <laughs> not to be confused with the Porcupine Tree song. Daylight you know, come on me, Wango. Oh. So congratulations to Jay and Gizmachi. Yeah, and good luck with uh, with the yeah. new uh, the new music because it really is deserving. Yeah, yeah so I, I, mm -hmm. you know, and I hope we can get back to having some heavy shows again, some festival shows and heavy shows, so that they can get out and and be exposed um, to a bigger audience. You know, again, another one. Now, of those is there is there that, Johnny? Is there a link they could? Go ahead, Paul. No, I was just going to say. Ah, the, the I guess froze. Is, oh, no, the sad part about it <laughs> we is, did. is the unfortunate part about it is a lot of these, like outside of things like Aftershock up in Sacramento, um, there aren't a whole lot of heavy tours or festivals that happen in the United States. So, um, you know, the guys in Gizmachi, the chances are they're going to have to do, you know, obviously the club tour thing and or, you know, get on a package deal in another country. South yeah, America, here's my, here's Europe. my package deal. Yeah. But Elmo, hopefully, look, package. you know, look, if everybody, if all of the people that have been lamenting the fact that there hasn't been any great live music, um, you know, are true to their word, when the clubs open up again and when bands are allowed to play again, buy a ticket to a show every oh, God, fucking yes. weekend. Sup support every fucking the weekend. bands. And I always say this, support the indie bands. So, I mean, look, always, always buy the CD of like ACDC or the big guys, but yeah. also support bands like Gizmachi, bands, you know, single artists like Phoenix Vanderweeden, right. uh, Trailer Park Vampire I talked about a week ago. You know, support the indie guys and girls and, um, you know, support again, every let, band. let them make <clears throat> a living and show up for the shows. <clears throat> Johnny, where, where, can they, where can they buy new Gizmachi music? 
Is there's there, the, is, there's, is that there's the, link? the link. That's the link. It's in the chat. There we go. Right there. And it is a real song because I did get the copyright claim. There you go. Because I play it. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's what it's, you get for trying actual, to promote your friend's band. It's an actual tune. Yeah, I got the email yesterday. <laughs> JJ said he's not going back on tour without the kids. So the kids are going on tour. Ellie, you're going on tour. <gasps> awesome. Great. <laughs> Yeah. I remember seeing I remember seeing the Osborne kids on tour when when Ozfest first started out. Just if you want your kids to grow up like the Osborne children, Jay, put them on the bus. Yeah, Jay's gonna have a papoose on stage. On his back, his son will be there. Ah, you know, and Jay will just be thrashing along, and you know, you just see the kid ah, like 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 Baby Yoda in the pouch of the Mandalorian. Yay! You know, <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> but yeah, you should. And if you're in a band, um, this goes without saying, you should always buy a ticket to see another band. And we, you know, this goes back to when I was when I was playing out. Yeah, support um, each other. You got to go out. Yeah, buy. If every member of every band on the scene buys one ticket to see another band in the scene every weekend, the scene supports itself. It's an plus. It's an excuse to go and flyer for shows. Which I don't know that bands do that anymore. Now it's all about Facebook and fucking invites and. You know that kind of shit. It's all um, Zoom shows now. Yeah, the good, the in the but in the good days it was great, man. And back in the day, yeah. it was you know, uh, Wayno and I would we wouldn't even go to the show because we wouldn't give a shit about the band. It could be some shitty band uh, playing at the channel, but the channel was like thirty miles away from where we lived in Framingham, and we'd jump in his car. We'd you know grab some beers for the road. Not saying you should do it, just saying we did. Um, we'd grab some beers for the road, get down into Boston grab a couple of beers, put them in our pockets and shit, and just go through the parking lot of the channel and flyer everybody's windshield. And then we drive to, to another club, flyer those windshields until we were out of flyers or beer, whichever came first. Um, the good news is we didn't have the money to get more flyers because it would have cut into our beers funds. So we would get more beers and, and, and then drive home. Nice. And you should have saying we did. And, and that by was the what way, it was about. It was all about that, about that, you know, supporting the scene thing and getting out there and doing the, the, the legwork. That it and it was fun, man. It's fucking fun. Music is supposed to be fun. Whether the, it's aggressive the, or not, it's supposed to, the whole thing is supposed to be a fun experience. The best day at home is not as good as the worst day in yep. a music club watching live bands. I've seen a lot of shitty bands and I don't regret a minute of it. Like being, you know, because when there's a shitty band on stage, there's always something going on in the bar, man. You can always, you know, run into some friends, you, you drink, hang out with your, you know, whatever road whores are out there that are looking at the band. You think to yourself, he's not going to bang that chick, but I can. <laughs> oh, hey, I wonder, out. I wonder where I am. Excuse, <laughs> I'm a live band. <laughs> Mom, Mom, what are you doing here? Wow. I'll be right back. All right, Charlie. Uh, and by the way, while, while we're uh, taking a second here, let me just uh, say hi, because we didn't do roll call in the chat. Um, but I, <laughs> we're but only I an hour and three minutes into the show. Yeah, uh, now is a good time to do roll call, John. Uh, Dane Zimmerman in the house, Bozik in the house, Gary Tholander, my girl Sandra Bacorny. Bacorny, 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 me love you a long time. Uh, everybody in that John BL, every, everyone's here, a large crowd. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. If you could take a second and hit the like button, cause it costs nothing. Uh, that would be uh really cool until you get me a Christmas gift. So that's probably all I'll get. <laughs> yeah. So if you could hit the like button for us, we'd appreciate it and, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel and, uh, yeah, no, Paulie, you know, going to the club and seeing live music is just an experience. The bands can suck, and that's just as fun sometimes. Because you're just kind of rolling your eyes at your friend like, oh, they're on stage, all right? Are they almost done? Uh, you know, it's just fun. Oh, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. Yeah. You, you, stand there, <clears throat> you stand there with your bandmates, and you look at them and go, we're fucking better than that. <laughs> and that's what we used to do. And we weren't when we weren't at the shows, we'd be sitting in front of MTV watching Headbangers Ball with beers in our hands going, how the fuck do these guys have a deal and we don't? <laughs> so it's who you know and who you uh, blow. Sometimes. And by the way, this weekend, uh, if you guys want some reruns to watch, I was on um, uh, Show Me Your Pick 
episode, I think it was 23, talking about John Bon Jovi. I showed off I showed off a, a Bon Jovi guitar and a Richie Sambori guitar. So mm-hmm. check that out with Fruitcake Tony. And then uh, I was on Communication Breakdown, episode 29, with Sandra Picorni and Big G Gary Tholander. Uh, so check that out as well on YouTube. If you're bored for some reruns while you're wrapping your early Christmas gifts, did you buy anything during uh, Black Friday, Paulie? I actually, this is fucking retarded, is what this is. Um, you, th- you misinterpreted the holiday. You were like with a Black Lives Matter sign walking down the street. You're like, wait a minute. Oh, no, it man. was. So I, uh, I had an appointment, a doctor's appointment on Friday morning at eight twenty. Because why not make a doctor's appointment on Black Friday? And during Um, COVID, absolutely. Right, sure. So I went and did that, and I had a dentist appointment the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so that was fucking stupid, too. Uh, But I got it all out of the way in one week. Um, But on my way way home, um, I ended up, a friend of mine wanted to grab, I get a text, and they go, hey, um, which would you buy? A 240-piece tool kit from Craftsman or a 270-piece tool kit from Husky? And I said, well, what's the difference? They said, well, they're, they're both $99. I said, well, do you need the extra 30 tools? In the absence of, of a good answer, more is better. So get the Husky set. So they yeah. go, well, it's at Home Depot. I'm like, well, I'm passing a Home Depot on my way home. So if you want, I can grab you and we'll go grab it. And and she goes, yeah, all right. So we go to get the, because my, she's my friend, my friend, Laura, who is more manly than I will ever be. She's sleeve tattooed, <laughs> shaved head, rides a hey, Harley shovel head. Yeah. Hey, Paul, let me give yeah. you a hand job. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. That's the beautiful thing about Laura and I is we can both go to a strip bar and, and talk about molesting the strippers. Um, so Laura is stop that. What are you eating? Rob. Oh, 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 oh. What's oh, what's boy. what's he destroying? Uh, there goes my slash. Oh no! Oh no! All right. So anyway, <laughs> doggies <laughs> seek and destroy. Uh, well, he didn't. Oh no! So far, all he got was the strap. I don't think he chewed the strap on. He's chewing on your strap on. He didn't get the wallet chain, <laughs> and the cigarette is still in his mouth, although it's broken. That's oh, not no. that doll that was for sale. Remember that one time. No, it's not that one. That's not the wedding cake doll. <laughs> no, no, no. That's funny. <laughs> the no, one from um, Slash at the top of Slash's wedding cake. No, that's a different one. So yeah, no, he didn't he didn't get too much out of it. I don't know what wow. just a little bite in the crotch. That sucks. Asshole. Um <laughs> so I can fix that. I got an ultimate set of tools now. Um, well, yeah, but did you get the craftsman or the husky? We Which got the one? husky. I got the husky, and the funny thing about it is I don't need it. I've got a full toolbox in my garage, but there were only two left. Laura wanted one, and I'll be damned if I'm going to leave one there for somebody else. Because for oh, yeah. ninety nine for ninety nine dollars, getting a two hundred and seventy piece mechanics tool set in like a little toolbox and stuff like uh, that, I can throw that in the back of my truck and just have that with me at any time. Should have bought. I might one, actually though. have the same set. Is it is it in like a black thing that that opens two ways? It opens, uh, the top opens, the lid opens, and all the wrenches are in the lid, and then it's got two drawers on it. Okay, it's different, different, okay. Yeah. I I have a real, I have a really big husky cock. Uh, No, toolkit, and uh, nothing. And um, no, I I bought one of those husky toolkits, and they're great. And, you know, I like the Craftsman also, but they're they're backed up with a lifetime warranty from Sears, and you don't know how long Sears is going to be in business, so... Maybe the lifetime mm. of a hamster, you know, three years or something. And the same thing with uh, with Husky. They have a lifetime thing, too. I'm going to put this yeah. back up on the shelf, and i got to get a Pepsi. Then, so Yeah, Husky's good. Snap-on's good. I mean, you know, I, th- there's something about, as a guy, you got to have, like, a full tool set at home. You just you just got to, you know? Johnny, do you, have, do you have a bunch of tools at home? I do, but I don't really have sets. I just have, like, I just have, like, miscellaneous a wrenches. hammer, two screwdrivers, wrenches two that wrenches. don't fit anything. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have. Yeah, I, but, but I, I do see though when you when you go to Home Depot, you see those Husky and like right in the middle, they have all those. 
Yeah, it, it's kind of addictive. Got? It's it's addictive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have like a really big toolkit, like for all the wrenches and screwdrivers and Allen keys and all that. Then I have like I'm like Wiley e. Coyote with multiple hammers and mallets and shit, and you know. And it's like I, I won't I won't fuck around with like electrical, you know, but like other stuff like i'll i'll do like general home repairs or something like that if something breaks or something um you know you, you know i grew up around them my father you know always had like major amount of tools in uh, in his workshop and i was always like ah oh, and he's like let me show you how to work this you moron I'm like okay dad you know and he just this is a screwdriver if you have this, you're screwing. Uh, oh, okay. Which led to a lot of confusion in my teenage years. Yeah, there you go. I, I have shit like that. You know, all the wrenches and, and sockets and, you know, all t all types of pliers and cutters. And yeah, I have pry bars and lock picks and all, all sorts of shit like that. But you know what? It comes in handy. It really does. When you want to take something apart or or just, you know, fix something around the house, it really does come in handy. It's it's a worthwhile investment. You should you should you should know how to use at least basic tools, even if you don't you know fix a plumbing leak or something. It's it's just good to have, you know. Yeah, it's always good to know how to use a hammer. Yeah, if I had a hammer, I'd hit you in the head. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I have motorcycles, so I have to have tools. Like, yeah, you work. Harley, you do your own Harley work? Davidsons. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Self-explanatory. No, you know oh, what? That Harley another oil spill. I don't know. I don't have old Harley David. Well, my, my <laughs> bikes are older. They're 15 and 20 years old each. Um, but but like Laura has a shovel head, which is a, a, like a 70s, early 80s bike. Oh, which, she's that ugly? Yeah. They are. They are. <clears throat> shovel heads are notoriously. Yes, those are the ones that piss oil constantly. They're notoriously unreliable. They're just a tough motorcycle to keep running. But it's a classic motorcycle. There's something to be said for motorcycles and guitars are the only two examples of American and substandard engineering that people still buy. Yeah, um, and, and they're usually know, related. Yeah, um, you've got the you've got the um, you know obviously Strats and Les Pauls are legendary guitars. But let's face yeah. it, uh, Ibanez and a lot of those other Asian manufacturers make every bit as good a guitar, if not better from a manufacturing and electronic quality and, and construction, but there's no soul to them. Yeah. There's just, there's no soul. There's, there's a different soul to your old BC rich gunslinger yeah. or your, or your, you know, your American Charvel, uh, the Mexican Charvels right now that they're making and the plant down there in Ensenada are as good a guitar as has ever been built by Charvel. They just are, but there's some soul missing to them. And that's the difference between a Harley and another motorcycle. And I, I you know, guys like to say Harley Davidson, like, like Jay Hannon. Yeah. Jay's never ridden yeah. a Harley because when you're <laughs> on one, Oh, he's dissing you. He's <laughs> talking about your mama and a Harley, your mama on a Harley, your mama going with guys that drive in Harley. Oh shit. He said your mama. There's, there's, there's a soul to it. Just like when you connect with a guitar, um, being on a motorcycle, certain motorcycles. And by the way, they're not all the same. You can get on five different Harley Davidsons from the showroom, and they're going to be five different motorcycle experiences. They're going to feel yeah. each one's going to feel different. It's a lot. One it's a lot like a Les Paul. You're right. Yeah, it's a lot like a guitar. You know, you, you find one that that speaks to you. You get on it, and you're you're attached to it. Which brings me back to Laura's shovel head. I've ridden Laura's shovel head. I know why she loves it. Um, I don't want one. I don't want that bike, but I understand why she loves it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she needed a toolkit because I went over there on thank not Thanksgiving, the two days before Thanksgiving, so the Monday before, um, or Tuesday before, because she couldn't get the bike out of gear. So I went over there to to adjust the clutch on the bike because she doesn't know how to do it. So I take the the primary cover off and the derby cover off, and I'm showing her how to adjust her own clutch so that I don't have to do it again. And I'm trying to set it up, and I realize that the gearbox, there's nothing happening there. Something has gone wrong inside her 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 bike, and I went. I'm out. If it were my yeah. bike, I'd pull it apart and work on it. But you have fun with that. The yeah, because you'll, you'll also never hear the end of it if you fuck it up further. Right. And so if she um, – I think the cost to get that transmission fixed when she found out what it was, because it's an old bike. It's chain-driven. 
and I guess a rock got caught into one of the links of the chain, oh. got pulled into the primary, and just chewed up her gearbox. Giggity. Um, mm. Chewed up the gearbox on the shovel, and that bike is fakakta right now. She's got to get – it's going to cost her four figures to fix that transmission. You Probably know who she should take that to? <laughs> Watto's Repair Shop. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think Steve Bike. Annie, yeah. bring, bring <laughs> over the loner Indian bike. Uh, give yeah. that to her to ride. We'll fix your Harley Davidson. <laughs> yeah, It'll no, cost money. Harley's got good again um, when Willie G bought them back. Um, and then they they lost, for me, they lost sort of, the, almost like Gibson guitars as well. They lost a lot of their charm to me in the early 2000s. So like from like the late 80s to early 2000s, those Harley Davidsons for me, that's the sweet spot. Um, they're, they're reliable. They run forever. Um, they, they, they're not fast. Harley Davidson is not a fast motorcycle. It's a cruising bike. Like, it's not. Yeah, a it's, it's not about that. It's yeah. not about that. It's about. It's about. It's like drive. It's the difference between you know driving um, uh, a Ford and a Lincoln. A Ford yeah. will get you where you need to go, but the Lincoln will get you where you need to go. Different. It just feels different. Yeah, and then you got choppers, which you know you're riding like this, and you know <laughs> the little wheel yeah. up top. You know, it's like I used to watch Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch. <laughs> in the cartoons, you know, this was a cartoon. This was a, an old cartoon where the, the bikes were alive. So, you know, the bikes are talking to each other. And, you know, I looked I looked at the chopper. I'm like, well, that's cool. And then one of my friends had one. He's like, yeah, sit on it. And I'm like this. I'm like, well, how, how do you ride like this? He's like, it's a cruise. It's a cru I'm like, Jesus, God, that's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. No, it's a, it's a pain in the ass. Ape hangers suck. Um, <laughs> Joe, Joe they, the chimp has one of those. They look great. Um, and once you get used to them, they're fun. But when you're riding like this, A, you don't have really have control of the bike. Um, Not fun. And, and B, after about two hours, your shoulders burn. You really I, have to get used I to it. I can that. imagine. Yeah, so it's not the same. I mean, the, there's a reason why ergonomically, um, you know, I, what I ride, I, I ride a fat boy, and, and I've got what we call an f -er, which is basically like a low rider. Um, and I don't put goofy <laughs> bars on them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The and they're and they're rider. They're, they're comfortable and they're fun. The, the, the FXR is a very sporty motorcycle. Uh, for Harley's, it's very very um, maneuverable. And the and a Fat Boy is just badass. A Fat Boy is is the bike Arnold rode in, in Terminator Two. That's that's the prototypical big. You know it when you see it coming down that's the road. Manly, hard. I love it. That's a manly bike. That's I love know, it. It's a big cruising bike. I just love Mancuda's bike. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Oh, there yep. it is. That's awesome. Absolutely. That Bar is Barbie Superbike. That looks like a Suzuki, <laughs> like oh, a GS650 or something like that. What's that? That looks like that a tank? that's a Mancuda special edition. Yeah, that's that what does like that say? Hog and pink. That's so awesome. Pig and pink. <laughs> Pig and pink. Oh, Kirby, I would love to ride on that one. Yeah, that's and and the, the way that's set up, it, it's either. That's a Suzuki, a Suzuki GS, like one of those mid '80s ones that has four cylinders, um, like the Honda Silverwing, um, which were fun, fun motorcycles. Those are fast motorcycles. Back how, in bad, day. how badass would would I look jumping the fence of a Nazi prison camp like Steve? <laughs> in that. <laughs> you'd, you'd like, under, under pig, under pig <laughs> flying. <laughs> Gotten him the pig. You'd be like, uh, um, oh, what the hell was the movie? The one that uh, Val Kilmer's in. Uh, it's a uh, Zucker Brothers movie where he's the Nick Rivers, where he's the the, the pop star. Oh, um, no, not the not the Doors one. No, 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 no. Come on, somebody help me here in the in ask the, in, the, in chat. the chat. What's the uh, the Zucker Brothers movie that, uh, that, that Zucker Val Val Kilmer's in? Riding Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't believe I can't remember it. John Biel. I could have yeah. looked it up by now. There's <laughs> another one. Hey, uh, Vista Light 1972 <laughs> says, there you go. says jump the shark like Fonzie. Every every show I do jumps the shark. 
This this is funny. A furry pink bike. How badass would I look on that? I'd look like the pink Power Ranger. You know what's fun about those bikes is you can buy two or three of those for the cost of a Harley Davidson now. That's the that's the other thing I hate about new. Oh, Harley I'm bikes. sure they're fucking way expensive. Stupid. Well, I need two of them because the first time I show up at the biker bar with a pink bike like that, when they kick the crap out of me, they'll usually knock over my bike too. So I'll need a second one. So that's, you know, that's a funny thing. You don't see that as often as you as you would think. People like knocking over people's motorcycles, shit like that. Like you see it in movies a lot more than you see it in real life. For whatever reason, there's a weird. It's almost like people that own jeeps too. I always I'm always shocked when I see somebody park their jeep outside of a bar or or in a shopping center with you know no roof and no doors on it. Just leave the jeep there. Yeah. And people yeah. don't people don't fuck with it. Like my neighborhood, my two houses down from me, my neighbor Jason has. The most like involved Christmas decorations out in his front lawn, and it takes him like three days to set them up. So he puts all the, the the bins and boxes and shit in front of his garage for two or three days. Nobody touches it. Of course, it's Arizona and everybody has guns here. But the point <laughs> being, the point being, like, like you know, when you go to a club and you see a band and people leave their guitars on stands, and nobody fucks with them. They just sort of leave them there. Um, uh, there's some kind of a nice sometimes. yeah. It's kind of a nice culture. That's pretty funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> nice. By the way, the movie was top secret. That's the one uh, we were talking about. Oh, there Zucker we go. Brothers one, yeah. Zucker Brothers. Yeah. Uh, someone else, uh, Kurt S fifty one fifty says, "Man, Cody should jump jump Snake River like Evil Knievel <laughs> in, in my my pink furry cycle." He Woo! tapped out a third of the way through that. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, that's an old, that's a mid eighties Harley. That's got an Evo engine on it. And that's, that's look at that with the hail and logo. That's badass. Yeah. That's at the nice. hard rock in uh, Sacramento. Nice. So that was actually Eddie's. Yeah. That's, that's a good looking machine. It's not pink and furry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Senator Picorni wants to know what is today's show and tell guitar hint? Uh, let's see. It is. The guitar is so hot, in fact, it's burning like a flame. Aha! 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 It's burning like a flame! I it's, see a what gay you did there. it's a gay guitar! That's what you got! It's a gay guitar! Harley doesn't. You still use the Evo en uh, engine, professional idiot. <laughs> they don't. They've gone away from it. It used to be on, still on the Sportsters, but they don't make them anymore. It's really funny how like the guys that are like all uh, into the rice rockets, you know, all the the Kawasaki ninjas and stuff like that. They're they're just totally not hanging with the Harley guys, and the Harley oh, no, guys are totally not hanging with the Kawasaki guys. It's like that, two. It's like two yeah. total different families. They don't associate. No, it's interesting because you know you see you you know there are people different cultures that drive certain vehicles like Jeeps and whatever yeah. and there's you there's the way you know you're on a, when you see two guys in harleys and they go in the other direction you always see the what's up yeah you know it's almost that, like that the, nod yeah but it's like that this, knowing you know, knowing nod like yeah i get it i get it but you don't but you don't ever see that like if you're riding down the street and you see a guy and he's on a euro bike or or an asian bike a metric bike see them and you're like wave fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wave like this you bitch out the road, you bitch. Usually the ninja guys are those assholes that like fly down the highway at a hundred, weaving through cars, and like you're expecting to see like the wreck of a bike two miles ahead, or they like do a do a brake stand, you know, and just like bounce on the front wheel, like in the middle of the fucking highway. It's like, holy shit. Oh yeah. Johnny, is tomorrow is tomorrow uh heavy metal Wednesday? No. No? Okay, because I'm looking. Uh, Jay, Jay is talking about an unboxing that he's going to do of a new guitar. And he says, odds are I send it back. Two to one, three to one. <laughs> I'm saying one to one. Jay, Jay is the Karen of guitars. Yeah, let me, let me speak to the supervisor. Let me speak to your supervisor. Hello, Jeff? Jeff, Jeff Kiesel? Yeah. Yeah, we got to talk. It's Jay Hannon. Yeah, that Jay Hannon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So what show Actually, is that uh, going to be on, Jay? Is that Friday? <laughs> I love Jay's unboxings because it's it's almost like the look of disappointment my mother gave when I was born. Oh, my baby. Oh. <laughs> like what's that uh my father's <laughs> like, back <laughs> my father's like who wanted the eggplant parmesan i thought i was getting a son today what a little slimy bitch oh, God. jeez what day what show is that jay is that friday wow. uh i see a list of them stealing someone's mock-ups i did not there's, a, there's always good Kiesel news on here. <laughs> there's no such thing as good Kiesel news. Yeah, good and Kiesel don't don't usually uh, go into uh, into the same sentence. He's he's got the he's got the good the guy from uh, the Good Burger TV show working at Kiesel now answering the phones. Hello, Good Guitars. Welcome to Good Guitars. Can I help you? Welcome to Good Burger. I mean, Good Guitars. Can I help you? You know, there's a guy that plays that character down on Hollywood uh, Boulevard. I've, I've met, I've met him actually. I've have met him, him actually. I met, I he met him at a con. Sounds exactly. I like met him at a convention. Him. I have photos with him. Yeah, no, he looks just like the guy. Hi, right, welcome to Good Burger. Can I get you Good Burger? Can I take your order? It's a great show. <laughs> uh, that movie I've seen. Him I've and seen. him and Keenan Thompson. Mm -hmm. I want to. Keenan Thompson, who is the longest serving. Saturday That's Night an Live. L member. He was there when yeah. I was there. And you know yeah. what it is? He he told me, he's like, why should I leave? You know, he's like, I get the Fat Albert movie. I, I can do it and keep my, my SNL job. Why not? He's yeah, the no, smartest. It's, it's he's the money. smartest guy in the world. It's easy money. He, um, Consistent. he's good on it. Yeah, yeah he's good on it. Uh, he's got a couple of recurring characters that work. He's a good writer. Mm -hmm. Smart kid. Yeah, no, and, and he's he's... You know he's he's very um, he he just he's he just knows where the bread is buttered and that that's really really smart. I used to say that about um, Jason Priestley on nine hundred two one zero because like he was the last one to stay on that show. Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero. Jason Priestley was like all the other cast members had gone on already. Already when you started the show when it first came on the air, Ian Zierling already looked like he was like thirty. Yeah. You know, and he's in high school. You know, he's supposed to be 15. He's in high school. He looks 30, right? And then, yeah, and all the others. And they, they eventually fell off and moved on to other projects. But Jason Priestley was like, hey, I'm I'm probably typecast here as Brandon. And uh, I'm going to ride this wave until it throws me off the board. Well, he really was like the main character on that show. Yeah, but but eventually, like yeah. after I don't know, fifteen seasons, it's like okay, we get it. You can only be in high school so long, man. It's like Archie Andrews, you know. It's like you can only be in high school so long. But here he is, like you know, for like whatever ten years or something, playing that same character, and just like, how can I still stay on the show? Okay, yeah, I mean, because they wanted one original cast member, and there he was clinging on. They're like, all right, we'll renew the show as long as Priestley stays on. Hey, look, that's it's good. That, that's good money. Everybody likes to, you know, and you know, this as an actor, um, you know, people bitch about those Hallmark movies. Um, you know, that's if it, it was my partner, Mark mentioned it, Leslie Nielsen said him, you ain't acting, you ain't working. You ain't working. So, I always, yeah. always, say, I always say I take just about any gig, whatever the pay, whatever the role, whatever the position, you know, leading guy, extra in the background, whatever it is. Because it's working. It's yep. getting All money is green. green. Yeah. It's like, even though a lot of them don't register on IMDb, you know, it's like, I'm still taking, I'm still taking the paycheck. I'm still taking that residual or whatever. But that's the ego. That's the ego part of it. That's the, who cares if it shows up on IMDb? The check cash is just the same. I like um, working. I like, yeah. you know, it's like, look, I, I'm on lost. I get fan mail from lost. I sell props from the show lost. I take photos with people and make appearances as a guy from Lost. But you know what? IMDb does not say I'm on Lost. They show my photos from Lost on there. But because my lines were dubbed over, a la David Prowse, which we'll talk about, uh, I do not get a Lost 
IMDB credit. They can show all my, I have like 24 lost photos on IMDB, but like, you know, I don't, I don't get a, a credit on the show line, even though I'm in the whole season, don't get a credit, but you know what I do get a big fat fucking paycheck for the year I lived in Hawaii that they paid for. So there I am in the penthouse of a, of a hotel paid for with an ocean view every morning and a, and a big paycheck. You bet I'm enjoying that role. Yep. No, there's there's something I get these. I'll get an email from one of our salespeople that says, "Hey, are you interested in doing an endorsement for product X?" And my resp my first response is, "How long and how much?" Yeah, I don't give a shit. I yeah, mean, the answer is product, always yes. Yeah, there's certain there's certain product. First of all, when you start when you start saying no to roles, they stop offering you roles. Uh huh. And you know you what? Know? I've I've had this before. One job that's like a nothing job. You meet people. You work with people. Yeah. You network. You network. It's great. Yep. You never like I got. I got an endorsement deal for um, for a, a jewelry company. They're called Shane Company, um, and they're based out of Colorado. And what happened was, and they they have them in Northern California as well. They're a national. Yeah. They're high end jeweler. I always um, heard the commercials for Walnut Creek. Right. Shane Co. They, yeah. The, the Shane Company, um, their representative called our radio station in Kansas City. This is back in, so what are we, this is probably 2005, 2006, called our radio station in Kansas City that I was working at the time. And nobody would return their call. So the receptionist at the station transferred their call to my voicemail. So I get off the air, I go to my, my voicemail and I say, hey, this is so-and-so, the vice president in charge of marketing for blah, blah. Could you give me a call back? So I walked down to our sales manager and said, hey, this is a client who spends six figures a year in radio advertising. Why the fuck aren't you calling them back? And because of that, I have been doing Shane Company commercials for 13 fucking years. Even though they went through a bankruptcy, even though they went through that stuff, because all you do is you take the effort to network with people and you do the right thing and you be a good person and that relationship carries you. And is it a great, is, is it a great product that I use? I, I, I love Shane company when I go there, but I don't, I don't buy high end jewelry. I don't have a, and I'm not getting engaged yeah. anytime soon. So, so, but that's what they do. They sell high end engagement rings and, and lockets for mother's day and stuff. Like, well, my mom is dead. All that I, stuff. I can't. Eh. So you get these, you, you basically what I'm saying is all jobs matter. All jobs pay, all gigs pay. Um, even when they don't pay, they pay. Like if you're a band and they say, Hey, do you want to open for this national act? And we're not paying you, but you're going to be in front of this national act. Well, mm -hmm. if you're in front of this national act and maybe a member of that road crew, um, is going out on the road with Pearl Jam next year. And Pearl Jam is looking for a third band on the bill or a second band on the bill. And this road crew guy who's friends with Eddie Vedder goes, oh, I saw this band in Walnut Creek. Yep. That would be cool. And suddenly you're on a tour. And suddenly you've got something. All because you were smart enough to not you were say there. no to that role. You were you being were, seen. You mm -hmm. didn't say no to that role. And that's yep. why, John, regardless of whether or not you're on the IMDB, I've never seen an episode of Lost. So prior to meeting you, I had no idea you were in that show. Johnny's never seen it either. I've never seen it. Johnny's never seen I, anything. I know about it because I used to teach a kid guitar. I'd go over to their house, and every time, like the TV would be on, I'd, it'd be on Lost. Like he'd be looking at it, like in between lessons and stuff. It's it's one of those what I call a legacy show. It's like Star Trek. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, and and the fans are worldwide and super devoted. I'm on like all these lost group pages on Facebook and I get questions. I get questions. I get, you know, just like, you know, um, a lot of lost questions, you know, did, and did, did, you you ever, question like did you ever do the convention thing? I've made appearances at conventions just for various things. So like Hollywood treasure, which was uh, the show on sci-fi, I appeared at a bunch of conventions and under my name, it was, you know, Ho John from Hollywood treasure and lost because just before I got Hollywood treasure, the producers saw me on lost. And that's why they're like, 
oh, John was on this and he can transition to this. So mm -hmm. it, I was doing double duty there. So I was signing, like I had photos of me, you know, on the set of Lost and stuff like that. You know, yeah, yeah. If I, if I send out an autograph to someone, it's usually um, me in the Lost director's chair, me holding a gun or, you know, me with the other cast members in a big group shot of, uh, you know, myself and Hurley and Jack and Kate. There's like one photo. You can look online. There's just... Mm -hmm. If you Google John Mancuda, John Mancuda lost, you'll, you'll see like, you'll see a picture photos, of you on the back of certain a photos of over and over certain photos. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll see, you'll see loser from lost. <laughs> Cause you the, mentioned the David, David Prowse earlier and yeah. that's all he did was conventions after star Wars. I mean, he obviously had a, a big role. You know, yeah. the thing about lost, <laughs> you know, like he's still on yeah, but you know what, here's the thing though, the average, it was, it was the a average big person role. has no idea who he is. Only the only the, the Uber nerds know, and God love them. And that's the point I was going to make with with John was you're on Lost, and most people don't know that you're on Lost. Don't know but that. Don't know. Name. But it was another, a minor role. It was a minor role. Name another role that George Takei had. Yeah, you won't. You won't. What else was Walter Koenig in? But that's but that's the thing. You know, everyone was in Twilight Zone. Other than that, it's like. But but this is what I was saying about it being like a legacy series, Star Trek. Star Trek, Star Wars, Lost, guys that did the minorest, minorest parts, we could still go to appearances and the fans of that show just want an autograph or photo with everyone from Star Wars or Star Trek or Lost. Or, you know, certain shows have that following. And, you know, Lost happens to be one of them. They, you know, I've, I've been asked to sign you know, cast photos that I'm not on, but, oh, but you were on the show. So yeah, I could get your autograph too. Sure. You know, but like, it's, it's just one of those, like, um, you know, the stormtrooper that bumped his head, you don't see him out of the costume, but he's at cons signing appearances saying, see that trooper. That was me. I was trooper so number so. two. I was yeah, trooper right. number two. And you know, people want to buy those photos. You know? I'll be the guy. Elephant in the room. Johnny, what the fuck is that Les Paul behind you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's an Epiphone, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I've All showed right, it many times. Yeah, every, everyone's asking, they're like, fuck you, man, Kuda. We don't give a shit about you. You <laughs> stupid crap work. You suck. Have you come across and well, I shouldn't have said that. Have have you seen any like on eBay any pictures of, of you that are like forged? Have you Not seen any autographs? I, I there there's autographs of me right now on eBay. There's two of them. One's forty seven dollars and one's fifty two dollars. And it's not just me. It's the cast of the four of us of Hollywood Treasure. If you go on eBay right now, you, Google Google on eBay just for shits and giggles. Uh, Hollywood Treasure. Mancuda autograph. You ever forged your own signature? Yeah, one, yeah, I was about to say one is my mom and one is my dad. We don't want this crap, but we could use the money. I used to joke about I that think they're still on it wasn't funny. <clears throat> um I did that at one point. We were we were giving away an autographed um Black Crow's guitar in New Orleans. And uh I was on the air talking about it with the midday guy doing you know crossing over from midday to afternoons. And he goes, what do you got over there? I go, oh, it's a, it's a Telecaster. We're giving away autographed by the Black Crows. And he goes, oh, that's really great. I go, yeah, you won't be able to recognize some of the signatures because I signed them with my right hand. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the program director was fucking furious. <laughs> He's like, oh, no. Uh, that's, yeah, that. there you go. <laughs> Best wishes, John Mancuda. You know, Here's yeah. the thing, Johnny. If you're gonna be if you're gonna be a, a legitimate Hollywood star, your your name can't be legible. I I you have, I to, always have, hated you have to write that. like a doctor. I always hated that because everyone else does these like fast signatures that you can't recognize. I always said I'm I'm always gonna print my name. And first of all, let me get this out of the way. I don't charge for my autograph. I think that's stupid. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I get that like some people are like making a ton of money off of it and, and not that my mind warrants being charged for it, but I've been offered money to sign something and then send it back to people. And I say, if you send me something with just a return postal envelope or package, I'll always sign it for free. 
And I always do that at cons. I'll sell a photo. If you don't have something for me to sign and you want like a lost photo, it's like, yeah, $2. You can have a lost photo because it, it costs me, you know, a dollar to make. So it's like, okay, I'm making a dollar on the photo, but like I'll sign for free or take photos for free. Some of these people literally a won't sign stuff, B charge for a photo, C charge for seeing It's stupid. If I ever get to the point, God willing of success where it warrants me being able to charge like some stupid amount for my, uh, my signature, I would still never do it because you don't want to charge a fan like that. They're fans. You know? I, I, uh, this is so fucking stupid because, uh, you know, on the, on the show business ladder, on the bottom rung of the show business ladder is rodeo clown. And then one rung up is radio clown. And <laughs> that's because, and that's only because we're too fat to fit in the barrel. <laughs> so <laughs> whenever, whenever anybody has ever come up to me and they do, they come up at events and, and they, they ask you to sign something. And I'm like, I'm on the radio. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really sort of blown away when people ask for an autograph. It's and flattering, like, right? It's super flattering, but if, it's, if but you're it's normal, as well. it's flattering. If it's you're normal, weird. it's flattering. We used to, when I was in Memphis, I got my first t-shirt. All right. So the radio station makes this t-shirt um, because I'm an ordained minister. I did it as a joke, like everyone else back in the nineties at the universal life church. But they in Memphis, Tennessee, if you call if they call you a reverend, it's ironic and and goofy and you know confront. You know. Remember, I was a reverend on the, the Howard Stern station. We had Howard Stern in the morning and then me in the afternoon. So I had these T-shirts, and the first time I walked into an arena and saw a T-shirt with my own name on the back of it, I freaked the fuck out. I was like, "This is very surreal. Like I'm not anybody. I'm not I'm like." Like you're in the same business as George I'm also Clooney. The same nobody. So yeah, no, 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 no. You're in the same business as George Clooney. I'm in the same business as Howard Stern. We are not the same. Yeah, the same. You know what I mean? And and yet, when somebody comes up and they ask you for an autograph, that is the most flattering, uh, humbling, uh, gracious thing. It, it's a huge stroke to your ego, but it's also, it's just such a nice it's thing. Surreal. It's like, you you've made a connection with somebody so much so that they want something that connects you to them. Charging them now, now I certainly nobody in radio charges anybody money for a fucking autograph. What are you an idiot? But right. but the idea that anybody, whether it's an athlete or an actor or any sort of a celebrity, a president or whatever it is, would charge you for the honor of signing your name to a piece of paper for them mm -hmm. is ridiculous. That's yep. a gift. That's a gift. That's that's something that's so personal that when you charge money for that, it becomes product. But it's, a, it's it also it's a cheap, it takes it's advantage. Of, it takes advantage of the fans. I just think it's. I think it's. I think it's demeaning. I think it's. De yeah, it does take advantage. Of it. I think it's right? demeaning. I think, and, and the fans are who we're grateful for. If yeah, you're watching no, this, we love you. We no, appreciate I, I, you. Yeah, it's weird. It's 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 so weird. I it, it's it's a weird thing to me. I don't I don't understand. I will never pay for an autograph ever. Um, you know, and I and I actually don't get a lot of things signed, um, and I don't take a lot of pictures with bands and stuff like that that come into the studio. Um, I don't know. I just it's just I've got the experience. I don't need to validate that experience with an autograph. Although I do right, have right. some things that are signed. Um, you know, gifts that were given and stuff like that, which by the way, if somebody, if an artist or an actor or something like that signs something to you and gives it to you, that's humbling. That is a gift. That is a piece of them. That is them connecting with you. That's a cool thing. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, I, you know, the thing about some of these conventions are like people go there specifically to buy autograph photos. You know, and a lot of them, it's like, even if you're like, yeah, I was in the Swamp Thing movie, I'm guard, I, I'm the guard from the Swamp Thing movie. Okay. You know, you know, it's like, yeah, the, the photo is $10 for this one, 15 for this one, seven for this one. And the autograph is, uh, is $15. It's like people bought, excuse me, people buy them. People buy them left and right. They walk away out with stacks of photos and people have gone to me. They're like, you know, you're on lost. Everybody wants characters from lost you should charge money for that and i know i can and it's not because 
of me. It's because of the show's popularity. Same as Star Trek. Yeah, I was in that episode, the Talos of that was one of the aliens. Okay. It's not the actor. It's a, they, they are fans of Lost. They're fans of Star Trek or whatever. They'll buy any character you pr- you put in front of them. I don't want to do that though. Right. You know, it's just, it feels, it feels like, cause again, I feel grateful to any fans that give a shit about right. any crap I've done. And I use the word crap freely because you're watching the show. So, you know, it's true. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's you know, the majority, but that's the thing, but that's the thing. It's, it's like, it's not the matter of, I, I understand because saying, yeah, if you're, if you're washed up celebrity at a convention, thank you, by the way. Um, that, and then, you know, you've got to pay your bills and eat and I get it. I see boomer from Battlestar Galactica at every convention I go to and he's charging for the photos and I get it. And I don't you know, fault and, and, him. I'm and just that saying for me, for me, see, I'd, I'd never charge for a normal. See, that's the I thing couldn't. that sucks though, is a guy like boomer from Battlestar Galactica should have managed his fucking money. Right. Because you know you you know you guys are, are union and you know you have a retirement and you know you've got a pension and you know you had he was making some decent money in residuals when that show was in was in syndication and shit like that. So if yeah. a guy like that can't manage his money, that's on him. The guys that I understand and get are guys like old pro wrestlers. Because pro wrestlers have no union. Yeah. They have no health insurance. They have no health plan. They have none of that shit. So when I see an old washed up wrestler at a convention charging for a photograph or something like that. I understand. First of all, they're getting an appearance fee, but their appearance fee is like, you know, it's like 500 bucks for the weekend, um, which doesn't stretch very far. And, and they might get a hotel room and somebody might bring them some in and out for a meal. You know what I mean? Um, and whatever they make off that appearance is what they're going to make. It might be the only thing that they make for the next six months. So I get that when you've got wrestlers and guys like that, but I don't mean guys like Jake the Snake Roberts because that guy was making fucking seven figures for years. Yeah, and, and mm-hmm. pissed his money away. I'm talking about these jobbers that didn't, you know, that were not. And again, we're talking about B level, C level actors, um, people way more successful than you, John. Um, yeah, that's who- <laughs> not hard. That's not hard at all. No, but you know, I mean, some of those guys, are, you know, some of those guys don't have a union. They don't have a health plan. They don't have SAG after. They don't have. But- you know, but let me uh, let me you know, point out to you, you have to make a certain amount every year to stay in that health plan. When sure, I was sure. on Lost, yes, I had health and you know medical and whatever. When I'm doing you know nothing in COVID de- except for you know Johnny Bean TV, I don't have you. Johnny, do you offer a health plan? Do you, what do you what, do? We have a health plan? Uh, no, we don't have a health plan here. Right. So you know, it, it's yeah, it's we have a it's health only plan. As lo- yeah, we have a hell plan. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we got dental. I'll put my dirty fucking hands. Bring over that two hundred and seventy piece toolkit. Mancuni <laughs> needs a Mancuni needs a tooth drill. Come here, hey, but hey manhead. Come here. I don't have a lot of sympathy for millionaire athletes or actors or or guys like like uh, MC Hammer who pissed away tens yeah. of millions of dollars millions because they because because you know. Back w- and and now now you sit back and you say to yourself, if I could make, let's say you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's mm-hmm. a fucking nice salary, I would assume. Sure, sure. <laughs> so you make a hundred thousand dollars a year. You see about sixty eight thousand of that take home. You lose about a third of it. You know, Give so you see about six sixty eight thousand of that take home. If you can make sixty eight thousand dollars a year for ten years, that's about seven hundred grand. All right. If you can put a third of that away. That's still two hundred thousand dollars, and you let that sit for ten or fifteen years. Maybe you have enough to supplement your social security to get you through. That's a hundred thousand dollars a year. So when you talk about these wrestlers and actors and guys that get paid millions of dollars for one movie, and they have five or six hit movies, and they're charging for autographs, that's where I have a problem. Yeah, with. that's where I, I sit back and I say to myself, "Fuck you, you're." You're George Clooney, um, and I'm not. I'm not shitting on George Clooney. And he does. By he all doesn't accounts, charge. he's one of the nicest guys in the world. Super no, but I'm nice. just saying, like it's one of the huge... most generous guys in the world too. Oh no, absolutely, super philanthropic. Um, yeah, but I'm just using him as example of a huge. For star. sure, Ma- for sure. Mark for Hamill a huge charges. Star, you can't even look at him. Mark Hamill. You can't even see what? Mark Hamill at all. 
at a convention if he's there, unless you have to pay even just to get around his guards to into the to see him. Ha- Hamill charges for. I mean, the guy, the big sci-fi guys, Hamill and 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 um, uh, what's his name, Captain Kirk, and you know all all the all the the big sci-fi icons. Made, well, he, they're always well, getting big money for the. Those he's the one that made the joke about the conventions on Saturday Night Live. Remember that? Uh, right. uh, uh, Captain Kirk did. Uh, what's yeah. his name? Um, uh, T.J. Hooker. Uh, yeah, what's his name? <laughs> Shatner. Uh, William Shatner. Shatner. William Shatner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Shatner charges like four hundred dollars for signature, Jeez. like literally, literally. I think I think Ace Fraley charges five hundred dollars to sign a guitar. Well, he looked pretty miserable on Halloween, so I mean, I mean, he's probably <laughs> suffering. That was the greatest Ace Fraley costume. Dane, ever. Dane Zimmerman to this so to this minute has we me cracking up just thinking made. about that. Got to have a statue made for that. Was the most. Was, that like, was, was the best. Ace, Ace Fraley met the Joker. De- that was depre- so de- awesome. Depressed Ace Fraley. It was fucking great. Ace, Ace has an epiphany. Ace has an epiphany, realizing how <laughs> how much his life sucks now. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best oh, for, the, for so those good. that don't know what we're talking about uh go on to youtube and look up Stra- <laughs> look up Saturday night live halloween, halloween. oh my and god that's the special halloween episode we did five hours and 15 minutes a- a- amazingly fun show we did and we lost johnny i'm Where'd sorry he hey oh. zach what happened to the screen? Why am I just seeing Paul? I have it on a, a, on a setup one night when you turn your camera off. The, the oh, thing okay. It just, oh, it's just, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, Dane, Dane was incredible. Uh, just watch that episode. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 Burger and the Guitar Center. There was some. There was some yeah, so uh, Queensryche. So, ah. <laughs> 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 yeah no yeah i mean i mean i mean that's the other thing it's a good point mark hamill mark hamill makes a pretty penny doing voiceovers he's one of the more he's one of the more successful voiceover actors out there i still Um, beat him for the role of snarf he's one of those guys that makes good money doing voiceover work so don't 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 shed a tear for mark hamill the idea that you have to pay 400 dollars just to see mark hamill is ridiculous but free market economy if people are going to pay it and, I, and, uh, and we're not smiling. <laughs> I know. He's he's the door. Right now. <laughs> Light, lightsaber just came through the door. He's like, Clark. Neanderthal. <laughs> 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 Neanderthal. He makes great money doing it. Four hundred dollars. I'm getting for the Joker. <laughs> no, and, and you know, you know who else makes a shitload of money doing voiceover? Clancy Brown. You know who Clancy Brown is? Yeah, wasn't he uh, like in Mahogany and all the other seventies black exploitation movies? No, and I'm gonna get you, sucker. Wow. No, no, you're thinking of George Stanford Brown. Oh, okay. No, Clancy Brown was uh, was uh, the the head guard in the Shawshank Redemption. He was also oh, okay. Uh, he was also the evil one in uh, in Highlander. He was also in Bad Boys with Sean Penn. Oh, what and Clancy Brown. Movie. Yeah, and Clancy Brown makes a ton of money, and he's in a bunch of other movies. I mean, he still does a lot of movies, um, you know, bit part movie stuff, but he makes way more money as a voiceover actor than he does as a fucking actual character actor because there's money in that. It's like $225 an hour. There's incredible work. good money in voiceover work. I've done some voiceover work, yeah. not nearly as much as I want to. Uh, but definitely like cartoons the, I still get residuals from like, you know, an episode of Marvel super squad and, and these checks just keep coming. They're not big checks. It's like, you know, suddenly it's like, Oh, okay. You know, $20 or something like that, but it's, it's 20 bucks. It's like every so often out of the blue. Oh, free lunch. Okay. I'll take that. You know? And, and then there's others that like, you know, the checks are like three cents. Literally, like three cents for the, for Euro Trip. I had a part in Euro Trip. I get a check the other day. It's three cents. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to spend two dollars in gas to cash this three cents, you know. But it's like, you know, the thing about it is, and and CC Deville told me this uh, years ago, when when 
actors as well as as rock stars are riding high on that wave of you're the you're the name of the day you never think it's going to end because you have yes people around you you have girls around you have your people kissing your ass telling you how great you are and blah 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 cc just bought a mansion up in you know somewhere i forget where but it was like this big oversized mansion and all of a sudden the music scene changed and no one was calling him. There were no tours and no one was playing the records. And all right. of a sudden it's like, holy shit, how much did I save? I didn't. I thought I would get another $100,000 advance. It's gone. And you don't realize it's going to end. Same with Boomer. Boomer was on Battlestar Galactic in 1978. Super hot TV show going on for a second season, a third season. He's thinking this isn't going to end. Suddenly, uh hollywood's not calling you anymore boomer and that's it yeah you know no, you get and you get your... guys, dirk benedict goes on to the a team for him it went on again and again but after the a team where did dirk benedict go who exactly <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. but but those you know those <laughs> deals should be written into their deal as now they have syndication you know, clauses. Whereas if a show like that lasts for a certain period of time, um, you know, they get X amount of dollars if it goes into syndication. That's why, that's why Seinfeld, you know, doesn't have to work anymore because he got, well, he got like Seinfeld. nine figures. Seinfeld one my, himself. One of my close, right. friend, one of my close, but friend. even everybody on Seinfeld, none of those people have to work anymore. One of my close friends wrote a lot of the Seinfeld episodes. So he's in that, he's in that family. He also produced Kirby enthusiasm and produced and wrote veep. And you know, he he's in that way, but Seinfeld was, it was his, his second big thing. He started as, um, as a writer on SNL and went as a writer for Seinfeld. He wrote some of the most classic Seinfeld episodes. He is getting residual checks left and right. That will never end. And, you know, he's him and his family are happy as can be. And speaking of happy as can be, thank you, False Flag. Shout out to my baby boy, Sagan, born 11, 20, or 11, yeah, 27, 11 27, right? November 27th. 27th. Congratulations, False Flag. Baby Sagan, named after Carl Sagan. He's the father of your child with your wife. <laughs> When you weren't home, they made baby Sagan, but you're going to pay for his life. There you go. Congratulations. Nobody really even knows if you're his father, but he sure does look like. See, this is terrible. By the way, fucking this is the worst part about it. The guy just had a kid, all right? You know, they three days ago, this gave us fifty dollars, and what do we do? We sh we shit all over him. He's like John's we're rug. Yeah, we're just revealing. We're just revealing. I didn't. Wife hooked up with someone else, and this baby's we're not such in. Jesus, assholes! I'm so Whoa, sorry. Gosh. False flag. Speaking of assholes, so wrong assholes in messy situations. Bang energy drink. Sorry, Steve. We're we're not really assholes. Yeah, delicious bang energy drink. Uh, supporting our military with strawberry blast and uh, purple kittles that you guys probably won't see in stores, but our military is seeing and appreciating. Thank you. Bang energy for, for all the, the shitty situations in life. You're always there to shit all over my carpet, which is now pink and white. Thank you. <laughs> oh, here's two baby, by the way, uh, false flag. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Steve, I'm really sorry. We're, we're, we're not, we're yeah, not we really bad guys. Yeah, we'll get Johnny. Give him back the fifty dollars. Uh, James Gum asks a great question. What's your favorite band featured in the decline of Western civilization? Part two. Odin. 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 Wasp. Easily. Yeah, wasp. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's Chris, so many. Chris Holmes stole that show. Yeah. yeah, Chris Holmes. I mean, even if it was fake, it was still great. Um, Anvil. Anvil was it? Was Anvil in no, there? No, Anvil or? wasn't it. No, Seduce. Seduce there was in London. Of, London uh, was pretty good. London, London that's so London. Big London was pretty good. Yeah, um, I you know I like some of the, I like some of the one on one uh, interviews. You know where they were doing like the testimonials with the light bulb on the side <laughs> there, and there was one fucking jerk that you just wanted to punch in the face. It was the kid that had his hair teased up to the side. He was wearing like the white tank top with the thing, 
And he was like talking about how, you know, I fluff my hair, you know, it, it kind of turns me on. It turn, the guy was such a fucking jerk. He was the guy that you just wanted to punch right in the, and Penelope Spheris is a genius. Cause she knew by casting that guy in that role that you would hate that guy. You would hate him so much. And, and I there, do. And there's a nobody <laughs> who stole, just chewed up scenery, just stole that situation, you know? And it's like, yeah. it's, it's like uh, the guys in the Van Halen, um, uh, uh, that Van Halen uh, do documentary with the fans. What, what is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. The unleashed. Uh, is, that, is that what it is? And then, and then the Judas priest parking lot, yeah. Um, heavy metal parking lot. Yeah. Heavy metal parking lot. Yeah. The best it's part a, is the, the guys, worst. You all remember them. The, the best part of the heavy metal parking lot is the chick talking about how she wants to fuck Rob Halford. And she's like, I jump his bones into like that, <laughs> that stupid face. Like I look at that girl and I think to myself, if you knew, <laughs> no, I think to myself, you're not even a seven. Yeah, honey. You're not only ugly. Yeah. Rob's, Rob's getting more cocked than you. Yeah. You're, you're, you're like, you know, I jump his bones. The question is like, if you're backstage at a, at a, at a, uh, an event at a party and the kind of ass that was showing oh. itself to Judas priest in 1984, 85, <laughs> right. Uh -huh. uh, the, the kind of chicks that were showing themselves to him, you just, you'd be like, it's not no, this. you don't, you don't rank honey. Even the roadies would get better tail than, than this check. Uh, also good parts in decline of the Western <laughs> civilization. That zebra, that zebra shirt. I love it. The the best part of the decline of Western civilization for me is the Miss Gazari's dancer part where the girl is sitting there in her blue dress with her tiara and they ask her what it's going to be like. She goes, well, I'm going to get along with my modeling and my actressing. And it's so <laughs> fucking good. Well, clearly Meanwhile, you're sharp on camera. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, uh, a young Terry Weagle porn star terry weagle in that in that uh that she scene makes, she's she one makes, of the girls for the gazari's dancer she makes my penis weagle terry weagle before lots of plastic surgery and implants by the way speaking of uh of plastic uh swiss picks one of our <laughs> sponsors one of our see what i did there sponsors uh they melt oh, down. Take a, they melt down i'm gonna get the the non-purple ones because i always usually show purple ones that. so i haven't opened these ones yet Mike Neese just got his from the Halloween contest and he sent me a photo. He's, he got oh, like a, rain, a rainbow color, like all, all rainbow, like a selection of various picks. Uh, I'd like to apologize cool. to Amanda Coombs because oh, no. she, she still hasn't received her belt yet. That means her pants are going to fall down. <laughs> she still hasn't received her belt yet. Her world championship belt. From the International I, Boxing Organization. I mean, you didn't send her bumper stickers either. Her Van Halen. I did not send her. I haven't sent her anything. I forgot. I oh, completely no. forgot. I need you to resend me her address. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that after the show. I'm sorry, and those will go out tomorrow. But, but thank yes, you for uh, sponsoring. Thank you for sponsoring us, Paul. Yeah, I mean, it was it was only two months ago. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know, really. <laughs> uh, I apologize, but uh, Amanda Coombs will get will be the proud recipient of the International Boxing Organization World Championship. I don't know what weight belt this was for. So, But it'll look it'll look sexy on Amanda. Right? Yeah, it'll look great on Amanda. I just put it back there where it's going to sit for another two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> next week, uh, next week, Paulie will ask me for the address again. I'll be like, uh, I, mean, I, I completely forgot, and I apologize. I'm an idiot. Oh, uh, that's all right. You're a generous stupid. Idiot, so. <laughs> stupid. So speaking of, speaking of it. I didn't send that out yet. Swiss picks. Uh, yeah. So if you haven't tried these, try them. Superior grip, definitely different than anything else out there. Really, really good, solid. I swear by these. And Mike Neese just got his. And who else? A couple of winners actually won Swiss picks as well. So check out Swiss picks. Yeah. And let me also let me also thank a few of our other sponsors, real quick, before we do the show and tell guitar, which we're coming up to. Which is uh, where I'm going to have to tap out. I got a dog situation and a, and a work situation to handle. He's a tapping. Vinum pickups. Look at these beautiful custom hand wound pickups by Craig Vinum. That's the Mancuda edition specifically. In beautiful pink PAF. Vinum pickups. If you have not checked out Vinum pickups website, you should because they make 
alter alternates to most popular pickups and custom wine, pretty much anything you want in different colors you want, anything custom, different sounds. You want something like, like a DiMarzio Super Distortion, but a little less muddy. He can do that. You just tell him what you want, and they usually have it ready to go, or he can custom wind you what you want. So check out Vinum Pickups. And, of course, Tessie Switch, also a proud sponsor. Look at that. The best kill switches on the market. You get the little ones, get the arcade style ones that Eddie Van Halen used. Tessie Switch sells a lot of cool parts, including the best guitar kill switches on the market. So check out Tessie Switch as well. Thank you, Tessie Switch. Sandra Bacorny got both. She got something from Vinum and something from Tessie Switch. Both are going to be purple. She showed off her purple Tessie Switch recently. Very, very cool. And Renus asks, do Swiss picks get caught on your strings? They do not. I love these things. Because look, look where the holes are. The holes are not where your pick is going. You see? Unless unless you hold the pick incorrectly. You know, if, you're yeah, one yeah, of those if you hold it backward and you're retarded, then yeah, of course. Some people do do that, though. Some people hold probably, their picks. Then you probably choke like on that. it, too. So, Yeah, there's some people who hold it sideways with, like, you know, the point going to the back and shit. There's, you know, there's no right way to do it, but if you're going to use Swiss picks, hold it correctly. Yeah, yeah. And don't don't chew oh, on, yeah. them, choke on them or anything like that. And I might as well point out I'm holding a Nerd Halen pick. Nerd Halen! Nerd Halen. By the way, Caleb has been taking some very cool Christmas picks lately. Did you notice? Uh, those are, I saw some old Christmas pictures. I haven't seen any new ones. Are those old with, the, with him in the socks doing the jump? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, I didn't there's know. some. No, there's some. There's some new stuff coming down the line. But I've, I know, I've been seeing old. I know he's working on. New, I know they're working on new song, and yeah. they did, uh, they did a Christmas song. Yeah, they did right. a Christmas song last year. I think they're just going to do some stuff to promote it. For All this right, year. Hey, listen, it's it's a good song. It's a good yeah. song. So there you go. Again, mm -hmm. it's nice to have friends who have talent because we have none. Yeah. No, Paulie and I. Wait. Are, well, John, Johnny, pretty. <laughs> John, Johnny finds the dregs of humanity and brings them on the I, show. I and charge for my signatures. I, I, <laughs> I'm just blessed to have... Look, all, all that money that... By the way, that money that False Flag uh, donated a little earlier, I, I don't see a cut of that. Nobody yeah, sees a cut of that. Well, it should be going to my carpet cleaning today. Yeah, nobody nobody sees a <laughs> cut of that. The only, only person making money off this show, Johnny Bean. Johnny Bean, Johnny ladies and gentlemen. Bean. The wealthy Johnny Bean. <laughs> He's, Who, he's like, also at a convention. us for I'll, years. I'll be like, I'll be sitting next to Paulie, and, and this is outside the convention hall with signs work for food. And um, and Johnny will be walking by. We'll be like, Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, Mr. Johnny, Johnny. It'll be like Elmer Fudd going through the park, and you know, Mammy, Mammy, Mammy. Look, it's Elmer J. Fudd. He's the producer, and Mammy, Mammy. Oh, Bugs Bunny, what are you doing here <laughs> with these woozers? You know. <laughs> Money bags beam. Money bags beam. He'll look like the Monopoly money guy. He'll he'll have like just a jaunty driving cap. Or lately, he's been wearing a beanie like me. Um, and and one of those mm -hmm. mustaches with a monocle. With the monocle, that's the important part. Well, yes, <laughs> the monocle makes it. Yeah, but Paulie and I have no future. Paulie has more future than me, but I I know I have no future. I'm fifty two years old in a Motorhead T shirt. Spending my Tuesday night online. What kind of a life do I have? Yeah, here, here's here's my life too. So I'm by the way, when this can is done, I'm turning it in for the nickel. I need the refund. No, I get it. Well, you need it for carpet cleaning. Yeah, you bet I do. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so it is time for our show and tell guitar. Today I will, I will watch the guitar and then tap out while you're describing. All right. Thank you. I, I, I gotta run, I gotta deal with the dogs. And, and shower and get my stuff together for work because it's later here than it is there. At least you can afford a shower. I'm still begging for the water to be turned back on. Uh, the clue I gave for today's show and tell guitar was it's really hot, and I mean burning like a flame. Aha. And, aha. So what do you think? Ah. Well, the clue, the clue obviously refers to something hot, flame guitar. So it's a flame guitar. As for burning like a flame... It's not what you're thinking as far as a song, but it is the artist that 
played the song Burning Like a Flame. Today's guitar is a celebrity guitar. It's one of George Lynch's early guitars, real early, like probably right around the beginning of Dokken. Uh, you've seen it probably in a couple of pinups, and you've seen it in the inside of the Dokken Greatest Hits CD, which uh, if you have the Dokken Greatest Hits CD, there's a photo of it in here, which I will show momentarily. But let me show first the guitar itself. Ladies and gentlemen, George Lynch's Hot Rod Flame Charvel from his early, early days with Dokken. There we go. Hi, Paul. Later, Paulie. My brother. My very treasured partner, Neander Paul, with 10 times more talent than me. Thank God we got him, Johnny, because otherwise this show would just suck. And for the next hour, it'll, <laughs> suck too, so. it'll suck for the next hour, so that's not good either. But anyway, so back to the guitar. Uh, so this was one of these guitars that George had early, early in Dokken. This is an early, it's a San Dimas Charvel. Hang on one second. There we go. It's a San Dimas Charvel, uh, pointy headstock uh, with maple neck, a dirty, dirty. Look how dirty that maple neck is. There you go. Now, a few of the parts have been switched around. Uh, the bridge has been replaced. The knobs have been replaced. They're originally black. Uh, the pickups were originally black also. But, you know, these are the things that happen over the years as guitars trade hands. This has been in four different collections aside from George's. And the owner of this at one point um, basically met George at a show and had him confirm it was his and then sign it on the back. So and then he clear coated over it, which is a smart idea. So. Under that little yellow clear coat on the back, it says, this used to be mine, George Lynch. And that's kind of fun, you know, more than just a basic signature, you know. Good idea. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's as good provenance as you can really ask. Uh, the number plate, by the way, switched out. Uh, George George did that with the BC Riches, too. He switched out his his number plates. I guess he likes the feel of the flat plates better, but uh, as you can tell, it's a beautiful hand-painted hot rod flame, green going into yellow with blue piping. I love a good Charvel hot rod flame. The old school San Dimas graphics are the best in my eyes, and this one goes on to the back, which I like a lot also. Love that pointy headstock. Now, the photo I was referring to, and I, I've seen this before in magazines also, but the photo, let's see if I could even focus in because it's so damn small. That's what she said. Uh, right there. Can you see it, Johnny? It's the inside front cover of the Docking Greatest. Yeah. Hit. It's an old photo of Docking, and George is holding that specific guitar. And there's other photos too. I have um, I have magazine photos of them holding it and things like that. But it's it's from their real early days. And he used it partly to record their first album. I mean, he used a few guitars. He used the Orange Tiger. He used Booger, um, which was his Green Tiger that Sharon Osbourne did not like. And uh, and this also was in the mix, according to George back then and uh like i said it's been through a couple of hands but now it is in my hands luckily thankfully and i'm really happy to have it and i just love san dimas charvels i love the feel of these necks i like the pointy necks as well as the strat head necks these were made so good these were just solid solid guitars with very very fast necks i especially like when they're maple um, but Charvel's, along with BC Rich, are my personal favorite guitars to play. Um, let's see. And uh, buh, 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 buh. let's see. What's in it right now? You have, uh, you have a PAF in the neck, 
And I think this is, uh, I, I want to say it's a JB, but it might be something custom in the uh, in the bridge position. I'm not sure. I haven't pulled it. But I believe I believe it's a JB or modified JB. I could be wrong. Zebra pickup. Again, not original to the guitar. The guitar originally had black uh, black pickups when you first saw it. Let's see if I could send Johnny a photo of it. Um, hang on. Bear with me, Mr. Bean. Let's see. Let's see if I could send this over to you real quick. So everyone could have a better a better look. Okay, let's see. Go into my photo stash. Bear with me, boys and girls. <laughs> Nothing more fun than dead air while I do this. Right? <laughs> the audience is like, take take a minute, by the way, if you're wait if you're waiting to see this photo, take a second. If you like George Lynch's old guitar, please leave a thumbs up. And remember, we love comments, so please leave comments as well. Yeah. I'm just getting you guys a photo, a cool old photo of this guitar with George that I probably should have, uh, in hindsight, gotten ready before the show. That's my bad. Mm. Johnny, give the plug to Jay's Gizmachi song. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Gizmachi. <laughs> The song. Jay had it. Uh, let's see. I know, I know you have the link for it. Is this it? Yeah, here's the link right here. You can listen to it everywhere. Everywhere. Even on the turlet. Listen to it while you're masturbating. There's no wrong time to listen to the new Jizz Mochi or Jizz Mucho or... Uh, Jizz Munchy or Jizz Munch on. <laughs> Broken ends. Thank you, Mount Tom. There's a lot of a lot of ways you can make fun of that. But it's a great song. So you should check it out. Uh, oh, come on. I know I scrolled past it here somewhere. Bear with me. Yeah, way to prep for the show, Mancuda. You fucking twit. Good job. Keep us all here waiting. Soliciting for thumbs up that you ain't earned. <laughs> well done, man, Kuda. Well fucking done. Why don't you send us photos of your mom undressing? <laughs> oh, no. That's terrible. <laughs> of course, my mother who watches the show is uh, is about to fall out of her bed listening to that. So happy about that. Why do you say things like that, John? It's embarrassing to me. Don't talk about me being nude. Or sex with your father. I hate when you say that to your audience. Uh, just bear with me. It's a cool photo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Kuda, this show sucks. Yeah, I know. You're getting what you paid for this week. <laughs> I'm sorry. Bear with me, guys. Photos coming. Photos coming. What else? Yeah. So it looks like Jay is getting a new guitar, a new guitar tomorrow, and if he decides to keep it, he'll show it on Friday. If he decides to return it, I think he'll show it on Friday too. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll hear about it. I think the chances are excellent of him sending it back because. <laughs> It's, you know, it's just what you do. <laughs> yeah, he's got... Jay, are you here? I noticed he just popped up on Facebook. Um, oh, yeah, there, there you go. By the way, I know I've been, I've been... Nightbot's been posting about this. Somebody stole, like, a whole bunch of my videos several years back. 
And uh, so feel free to go over there and leave comments on those videos before I shut them down. Where the fuck is this photo? Fake unboxing Friday. What is it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fake <laughs> unboxing. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. Yeah, and he said it's a seven string. Seven, seven, string guitar. seven more reasons to return it from what I'm understanding. <laughs> um what else? What else? How how's everybody doing? <laughs> how was everyone's Thanksgiving? <laughs> how was your Thanksgiving, Johnny? Uh, it was cool. Went for a walk on the beach and then had some food. That was about it. Oh man, your Thanksgiving sucked. I was I was hoping for a great story. No, no, because I, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't do yeah, Thanksgiving. Uh, no, I don't. I don't, I don't do anything. I don't do good stories. No. Um. Uh. What else? I uh, have a shit ton of leftovers. FYI. Ah, that sounds so good. It's phenomenal. I've been having turkey. Well, it's just me. So I have turkey stuffing, potatoes, and all that good stuff morning, noon, and night. Mm -hmm. The tryptophan kicks in during the day, and then I have to nap like a 90-year-old man in the afternoon. And then uh, I wake up in the middle of the night, and I can't get back to sleep. Man. You should call your mother. Where the fuck is this Lynch photo? Son of a bitch. <laughs> I can't believe I can't find this fucking photo right now. <laughs> it wasn't the one you just showed us? It's another one? It's another one. Yeah, it's a really good one, too. It's Oh, fuck. Fuck me. Okay, everyone, I'm, I'm sorry. I totally... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, it's in this vicinity. I'm honing in on it. Getting getting warmer. Getting warmer. Warmer. Warmer, Doc. Warmer. Robert. No, no, it's not a Kiesel. Oh, could you imagine if Jay gets another Kiesel? That's 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 a guaranteed return. Because their their customer service sucks so much dick. I see all over online like complaints about their customer service. Hmm. Left and right. People returning guitars to Kiesel. That's not good. No, it is not. And that is why I personally do not play them. Hey, listen, some guys do dig them. I prefer some older stuff like this vintage 80s Charvel of George Lynch's. Uh, God damn. Kevin. Dave's Dave's guitar channel. Hey, dude. Okay, so you guys want to see this? You keep you want to see this? Okay. All right. Here's here's my. There you go. Stall for time somewhere, Johnny. Here's my. Uh, and yes, it, it is uh, an Epiphone. It's on my other fucking iPad. Damn it. You have two iPads. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because that's a big luxury, right? <laughs> that's 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 the that's the level of celebrity bullshit that I am. Is uh... okay? I'm I'm giving up on this photo quest. I'll give it to Johnny. He'll post it in the Discord. I'll have to send it to you after the show. I'll send it to you after the show. Here's a uh, yeah. Gibson Les Paul uh, Epiphone has two uh, two P90s in there. I was going to change them out uh, to something else. I forget. Anyway, I just threw it on the on the on the stand. Actually, I was playing it. I was. Oh, it's got some stickers on the back. The Mayfire. That's a band. I played this. I I used this, this guitar in this band. Actually, played South by Southwest with this guitar. And there's also an EVH sticker on there as well. 
But no, I was I was just playing this. That, that's why it's out. I was just I was just playing it. There you go. All right. Yeah. So I so I fucked up. I fucked up the photo. So the photo will be in the Discord. I'll send it to Johnny after the show. I'm so sorry. Anyway, so there you go. George Lynch's early 80s, Sandy Miss Charvel, Hot Rod Flames, used in the first docking record, and uh early, early show dates. And uh you see it in the magazines. And I'll, like I said, I'll post another photo in the Discord. Of Johnny post a photo in there under uh, the talking guitars in eighties metal uh, section. So there you go. And again, with a very cool Lynch signature on it too. Look at that bad boy. So there you go. That's today's show and tell guitar kids. Stressfully delayed. <laughs> Stressfully <laughs> delayed with my apologies by my idiocy. If you like the guitar, please leave a thumbs up. Why not? Yeah. How many? How many are we up to? I can't even tell. No, what do we have? Like eighty? It, something like it that. doesn't show me. Let's see if we could get to a hundred thumbs up. Because why not? Yeah. Let's talk about some music news. Uh, let's let's start off. Um, Let's start off on a serious note because I know the Van Halen camp watches the show. Um, so this is this is relating. I, I really want everyone to pay attention to this right now, please. Uh, Janie Van Halen just went public and issued out a statement on Twitter and said, sometimes the person perceived as the strongest is actually the weakest. Broken and lost, but finally starting therapy today for the emotional support and help that I need. Hashtag not ashamed, suffering in silence, too much for too long. So here is basically Janie Van Halen, who for years has gone through the the abuse and criticism of a lot of fans which again is is part of you know part of the business it, it just is um because you know look some people just associate eddie's romance with valerie bertinelli and not janie and janie is factually his wife you know mm -hmm. um and you know look everybody got along and there was a lot of love there eddie obviously had uh, enough love for everybody but Janie was his wife, and at this point, losing him has been just devastating. And then having to reface everyone putting Valerie Bertinelli in her face also has to be hard. It has to be very, very hard. And here we are in the holidays, and there's no right time to lose your partner, to lose your spouse, to lose your husband. Or, you know, if you're in a different position, wife, grandma, grandpa, whoever. But, you know, specifically for this, Janie lost her husband who, you know, they loved each other very much. And coming into the holidays already can be a very, very depressing and lonely time for a lot of us. And I've, I've been there. I know exactly how it feels to be hurting on the holidays. It's not something you want to admit to people. It's not something people realize that you're suffering from inside. It's not easy to face. Uh, and here she is now during the holidays with a loss, a devastating loss that's very fresh and very public. And I got to applaud her courage for going public and saying, hey, look, it's the holidays. If you're hurting like I'm hurting, here's what I'm going through. Here's my example. Here's what I'm doing. And the right thing to do is talk to someone like a therapist. And she's made it very public that she is entering therapy for loss and depression and putting it out there as an inspiration for a lot of other people that during the holidays 
might be suffering loss, be it from COVID or other reasons or relationships or whatever. But the holidays can be a very depressing time. And here she is leading by example, putting it out to the public that, hey, it's okay. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to explain. Therapy is good. And I'm reaching out for help. And you have to applaud her for that. It's hard and it's admirable. And I, I tip my hat to it. And more so that she's doing it publicly as an example to other people that, you know, hey, she's suffering, she's hurting, and here's her cry for help. And she's reaching out and getting it. And anyone who's listening to me right now that has depression and is going through something during the holidays, during COVID, during isolation, during loss, just the holiday blues, or, or you're alone, this is your example to follow. Janie Van Halen, I tip my hat to you, and I think it's the best, most generous thing you could do is put yourself out there as an example of what to do. So there you go. Tip of the hat to Janie Van Halen. And we wish her well, mm -hmm. of course. We've always supported her on the show. And um, Johnny, thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I met Janie. Actually, when I when I met Eddie some years back, Janie Janie was there, and um, and I've actually I've I've become friends with with some of the family, um, and in and yeah yeah she just lost her mom as well and her brother, she lost her brother last year and then and then her mom just like a little over a week ago wasn't her brother to addiction? Am I right in that? I've. I, don't I know. thought I thought I remembered reading that. If I'm if I'm incorrect, forgive me. But I mean that that's that's that is Sandra Picorni spot on. You are a warrior, and and we applaud you for it. That's strength. That's strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's uh, she's great. And actually, it's her part. Her her dancing partner. Um, she actually manages a a, a wrestler. And he watches our show. I've seen him in the chat from time to time. Yeah, I remember him. Um, his name's Louie. And and um no, it's just it's just, it's been a very, very tough time for, for the family. And I've sent my condolences several times. Um, because I, I know several several members of of the family and and um it's just it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough already to lose those you love and it's harder during the holidays. So many, there's, there's so much pain during the holidays. Look, I freely admit it. I feel it. I, I, I freely admit I battle depression. I do. Um, you wouldn't think of it. You wouldn't guess it because I'm the happy go lucky. I like making everyone laugh and that's my outlet. I like to spread laughter to those that are going through rough times, but I've been there. I've been there. And, and for her to go public with it as such a high profile person right now, um, you have to admire that and respect that and, and do nothing but wish her well and follow her example. If you are in that position. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's. I I can't even can't even imagine. You can't imagine, imagine what she's that. going through. It's it's so much. It's so much. But but you know, again, the important part is, don't hold it in. Speak to someone. Reach out for help, and uh, you know, do do what she's doing. You know, a therapist uh, is someone who who basically takes all those confusing thoughts and straightens them out, and and makes you feel better. It makes you mm -hmm. see things differently from a different set of eyes. And, and again, you know, you can, you know, start with, with friends and whatnot, but you know, when, when you want to go to really take care of something, a therapist and professional help is, is nothing to be ashamed of. It's something to be proud of because you're strong enough to admit, Hey, I have something going on that I need to, I need to heal from, you know? Mm-hmm. 
And thank you, Bozik. Rock on, brother. Anyway, so she's a beautiful example to everyone, uh, and we wish her well with that. Moving on to another strong, beautiful woman, Nancy Wilson of Heart. How many times have you fantasized, Johnny, about Nancy Wilson running at you in the alone video with that open cleavage and those giant bouncy jugs? <laughs> I, 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 I never. just I never forget that. <laughs> yeah, me, me neither. Let me, let me clean out the socks under my bed that still have her name on it. Um, Nancy Wilson from Heart, uh, solo album coming out February or March of 2021. And guess who's on it, Johnny? Guess who makes guest appearances in songs? Uh, there's uh, Ann, Ann Wilson. No, but that's that would be a good <laughs> guess. <laughs> that would just be a heart CD. <laughs> yeah. Sammy Hagar and Duff McKagan. Baby. Oh. Oh, cool. Cool. She well, went to, uh, okay, that makes sense. I got it. That makes sense because she she's played um a, a couple of, of Sammy's um benefits. The the uh They're good friends in Mill Valley. He he does he, well he did. Actually in San Francisco, he did these benefits uh past several years. They were acoustic, acoustic shows. And I think I think she was at some of those. They're good friends, so that makes sense. Um, and Duff McKagan. Duff, Duff is just terrific. So, I mean, you know, he's he's appeared. He's another one that does so much studio work with other artists, you know. Um, it, it's, always, um, it's always interesting to see him on there because he writes also, and he, he's just so good at everything, you know, getting, you know, production stuff and, you know, one hell of a bass player to top it. But uh, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny how much stuff he appears on and uh you know nancy wilson to to uh to write a solo album i i didn't see that coming but uh, it's nice to hear from her again especially with such talent guesting on the uh on the songs you know yeah looking forward to that yeah so that that'll be cool and again that's uh february or march of 2021 not not sure of a specific release date uh, speaking of new album, we, we talked before about Judas Priest writing another album, a follow-up to, uh, what was the last one? Firepower? It was Firepower. Was the, No right? idea. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think it was Firepower, I, I believe was the name of their last one. Uh, Judas Priest, basically, they have all the material ready for their next album. The problem is, with all the COVID situation, they cannot get together all of them with producers and stuff and record the way they want to. So there's only a certain amount of people out there and availability and travel, and they just mm -hmm. can't get it together right now. So what they're going to do, they have all the material for a new album. They've got it picked out, ready to record. Thank you, KXM Rock. It is firepower. Um, they have it all together, ready to record, but they're putting off the recording itself for now to do the Judas Priest anniversary celebrations that are coming up. The anniversary of the band. What is it? 50 years now? Is it? No clue. Yeah. <laughs> Jump <-L. laughs> How, how long, how long has Judas Priest been together? I think, I think it's, I think it's 50 years. <laughs> I think. I Probably. Believe. Yeah. I believe. I believe. Uh, so anyway, they're, they're going to have, they're going to have, um, uh, the anniversary celebrations first, and then hopefully by then will be, uh, <laughs> there you go. KXM rock 50 years. Rena says it was 69 years, but then, uh, that, that would mean that, uh, that they started as sperm it was a sperm band. Yeah. So 50 years, um, and that's coming up, but, um, you know, once, once the anniversary celebrations are over, hopefully they'll be in a better position, uh, able to put that that album together recording wise so that's that and then uh let's move on to since we talked about Sammy hagar let's talk about david lee roth's new painting that he put out johnny can you google that is that the thing that came out today uh i think it was today it's uh 
the painting of Sammy Hagar that uh, David Lee Roth did. For those that don't know, David Lee Roth loves to do uh, artwork on the side, and he did a painting, this one specifically of Sammy Hagar. You would not guess it looking at it because, you know, he does some abstract stuff, but um, if you read like, some titles, he does the, a he does a lot of lot of artwork with frogs and stuff. I don't know what he does with gerbils or uh, or frogs or <laughs> red rock or <laughs> and yeah, Cobra Kai Platoon Tur Turbo was a great album. That's one of one of my personal favorites, actually. Yeah, I can't some rock. It's got to be special. Wait till you see this. Is it the airplane one, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put it on screen. This is David Lee Roth's interpretation of Sammy Hagar. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> there it is. The uh, the daily catastrophe, which which is a running theme for Dave. Dave Dave likes to do uh, little things about um, you know, he likes to do a framing of uh, as if it was a newspaper, and um, this particular one, he he specifically says, is Sammy Hagar. If you look. It says, um, let's see if I can, I can barely read this. But that that's Sammy, by the way, piloting the plane. Uh, let's see if I could bring the story up so I could read the exact quotes of what are on. Hold on. Uh, Con concrete flowers. Yeah. Sam. Sam the man not only will be giving his life for... Rock and yeah. roll. <laughs> yeah, the plans to be buried in his recently acquired what? jet jet or plane. Let's see. I, I think somebody's jealous. Yeah, it's it sounds like it sounds like Dave's kind of slamming Sammy here. I mean, that would be my my guess just looking at this this thing. Um because he's basically Let's see if I could bring this up. Hold on. Uh, oh, there it I is. I don't know. What Hold do you guys on. in the chat think of this? Yeah, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the specific quotes uh, used in this uh, in this painting. Give me a second. Bring this. You'll story. find that picture of that guitar before you. Find the I know. Right? <laughs> Jesus Christ, am I am I discombobulated? You know why? Because every goddamn thing I did today was uh was was spilled over by bang energy train. It like caught all my prep time. Okay, here we go. Um the quotes the quotes on there are let's see. Um concrete flowers for Sam. Sam the man not only will be giving his life for rock and roll, but plans to be buried in his recently acquired jet. And Red Rocker refuses to fly 55 in Afterlife. Referring to, of course, the song I Can't Drive 55. And apparently Sammy uh, has a, a recently acquired private jet. So, I mean, this looks like some kind of sour grapes, thinly veiled that uh, Dave's putting out there. And Sammy, of course, has no idea. Because you know, Sammy, when asked, "Hey, you know, how do you feel about the um, the rivalry, the the fa the former rivalry of you and Roth over the years? Uh, you know, how was it affecting you?" And he says, "Was it even a blip on my radar?" So, Dave, I don't know why all of a sudden, but that that's that's the well, way I'm reading it, Johnny. Rich, Richard just sent me a message saying. Uh... It was something to do with Sammy making a comment about Dave recently. Well, that's interesting. I, I'm not aware of that. Does he know what comment it was? Richard or Robert. I'm sorry, Robert. Do you know what he, what what it was? This is my first time seeing this, seeing this this, this painting. Well, he just put it out, and that's supposed to be <laughs> zoom in on the character in the plane. That's supposed to be Sammy. <laughs> there you go. What do you think? Do, do you guys in the chat think it looks like Sammy Hagar? <laughs> well, it's red. It's a kind of purplish. I don't know. I don't know. And uh, Bozik says Hagar's owned a private jet for a while. I don't know. Maybe he got a different one. 
Oh, he's 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 had a, a private jet for for years and years. I mean, he flies. I, I would band. imagine. I would imagine. He flies his band around. Well, I mean, for years you've seen on on Instagram and and his on his pages, you know, pictures from inside the jet with Michael Anthony and Vic Johnson oh, and. But what what did what exactly did 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 he say about Dave that inspired this this uh, masturbating? Uh, I mean, masterpiece. I don't know. <laughs> I mean that's some that's some plane there, and uh, you know, this is something Dave painted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of wild. Wayno mm -hmm. says it looks more like Prince. Oh, this is interesting. Steve Carmichael, one of our producers, of course, uh, sounds like David Lee Roth is responding to what Sammy was saying about risking COVID and playing live. What did Sammy say about risking COVID and playing? Oh, live? Sammy said that he was going to play live, and actually, he did. He did. He he did a uh, like like uh, like a pay per view type of thing. It was actually filmed the day that Edward passed away, and they went. Oh. They had they, they went ahead and and filmed it, and and um. Is that where they asked for a moment of silence on the stage? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I've already on, on the show many times expressed right now. Uh, now is not a good time to be live. So if, if you're playing live shows, I mean, my tip of my hat to, to all the bands that are doing um, online streaming concerts. I know Metallica has done a few and, and uh, mm -hmm. LA guns has done a few. And, you know, you know, that's one thing you're, you're doing concerts for people, whether you're charging tickets or whatever, that's fine. You're, you're providing safe entertainment. This is not the time for live shows. It's not, you, you're just, you're, mm. you're, you're just endangering your fans and yourself in a lot of cases. It's not the time. And unless we all get on the same page and realize that we're, we're, you know, we're just making the situation, you know, play out longer. So, you know, again, I'm not sure of the exact quote that uh, that Dave and Sammy had, but as far as a live show right now, during this sort of rampant, rampant, crazy, record-breaking people getting hospitalized, not a smart move. So not, mm -hmm. not a good painting either, but, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> you know... <laughs> I can't. I can't say. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be in the the Guggenheim or anything. But uh, <laughs> but there you go. So that's uh, that's Dave's word on the Sammy mini feud. I guess. There you yeah. go. Uh, moving on. Uh, Slash. Slash. Last year, if you remember, Johnny at Nam. Uh, Slash put out four new Gibson Les Paul models, signature Les Pauls, uh, replicating guitars that he plays in concert. And uh, which is kind of funny because Slash's main Les Paul was a replica of a Les Paul, but I digress. <laughs> I, I digress. Uh, but last year at NAMM, uh, Johnny and I looked at uh, four Les Pauls that Slash put out as signature guitars. Well, there is a new fifth one uh, a slash gold top. I believe it's called Victoria. I don't know. I don't know if that's a model or, or the name slash gave to his guitar. Does anyone know? The slash Victoria. Yeah. Is that, is that like a model or is that, uh, just um, like some, some provenance of slashes gold top or the name? Did he name that guitar? All I know is right now there, right now there's a new one, and Johnny could put it on screen. Uh, there's a new slash gold top edition joining those other four Les Pauls, which is very cool. That's a nice looking, a nice looking guitar replica slashes, you know, with the uh, the open top pickups. There you go, good looking guitar. Slash doesn't play garbage. There you are. Not as nice as Johnny's white Epiphone, but it's 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 cool. <laughs> there you go. The open black pickups looks cool on that. 
There you go. I think there's some sort of there's the slash signature on the truss rod cover, maybe something in the back as well. Maybe a slash drawing in the back or something. Mm, Giants, oh, does, it give a, does it give a price? Yeah. Was back, it of the, back, back of the headstock, there's like a, a drawing. A little slash drawing. Okay. And the, the price is uh twenty nine ninety five. There you go. One of those little slash yeah. in his hat in his hat sketches. Mm -hmm. That's a cool looking guitar. I mean, who doesn't like a gold top less less Paul? I mean, that's that's a pretty basic, you gotta like that, right? Uh, KXM Rock says Anaconda Green. That's one of the others, the other four uh, guitars in that Slash Edition line is a uh, is an Anaconda Green one. There you go. Yeah, so that's twenty nine ninety five. And again, if you guys are looking for you know a cool guitar for Christmas, maybe this is up your alley. There's the other four, right? uh two like th these two are, are his and then this is like other other people's oh hair. okay well hey you gotta catch them all <laughs> right they're like pokemon you gotta catch them all yeah and that's that's not a bad price point for a les paul all things considered because i i've seen like those ace fraley ones i mean i remember like at 15 grand for the lemon burst and you know and they, they were beautiful, you know, they were probably Tom Murphy aged and stuff, but but geez, I mean, come on. This is a little more a little more accessible. Are these made in the US? I hope. They they better be. Three at three grand, I expect them to be. Does it say? I don't know if it says. Mm. Should say. I think it would be. Although I, I think it was if it was a foreign one, it would be under the Epiphone brand. <laughs> John Bale. <laughs> I I assume I assume they're made in America. So there you go. That's Victoria, the gold edition. Yeah, Thunder Falcon says yes. They are USA. So there you go. Yeah, and I mean, I, you know, I I only have a few Les Pauls in my collection. Um, my favorite one that I, that I reach for is probably my uh, my uh, seventy eight tobacco burst, and then uh, I have an eighty uh, an eighty nine candy apple red that I also is really broken in that I like a lot, um, you know. But Les Pauls for me are always hit or miss, you know. And I haven't been a fan of of any of the newer made Les Pauls. I I, I think they always feel kind of cheap. Even even the R nines and the historics and all those you know ten thousand dollar you know, repro editions. I mean, I don't know. Some of them, they, they just don't get me the way some of the, uh, the, the New Orleans era ones do. And when I say the New Orleans era, those are so quality hit or miss. You really got to play those in person, you know, otherwise you're, you're just taking such a risk, you know, mm -hmm. there you go. So that's, that's the new slash Victoria gold top edition. So that's very cool. Nice. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, which should we talk about? Um, black angel. I saw you post that you posted this online last night for, yes. for those that aren't familiar with, um, the, there's a mini movie, a short film produced in 1980 called black angel. And it was originally, a double bill with the English and a few other countries overseas like Europe and stuff, uh, possibly even Australia. It was a double bill released as a, 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 an opening film for Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. So you saw Empire Strikes Back in England. You saw this little film called Black Angel, not Black Anal, Black <laughs> Angel. That's what called me. <laughs> uh, but you saw this film called Black Angel uh, originally as as the uh, as the opening movie, and then they played on the double bill Empire Strikes Back, which was terrific. So a lot of people have sentimental 
uh, feelings about this movie. They they remember seeing it. They said, "Oh, it was a, there was this cool little uh, medieval sword, you know, sword and sorcery kind of uh, film." Before I went to uh, before I saw Empire Strikes Back, I remember seeing it as a kid, and I haven't seen it since. Since 1983, this film has been lost, and it recently turned up. I think in in 2014, in uh, one of the archives, one of the archivists mm-hmm. found it in um, in Fox, and um, it recently got released with a little intro about it onto YouTube. So if you're overseas and you saw this little film before Empire Strikes Back and want a little tinge of nostalgia, go on YouTube, look up Black Angel, and uh, and it's it's there. It's there. I watched it last night. Did you see it, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, I just happened. How did I? I don't know how I stumbled across it. It was in my suggested things on YouTube or, or something. So I... I watched it. And it's not long. It's only 25 minutes. Yeah. With and, the intro. It's a 20 minute film with a five minute intro from the director. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a pretty good movie. I, I was, I was kind of, kind of bummed when, <laughs> when I, when I saw the ending, I was like, man, I, I would have watched more of this. Well, here's the thing, you know, George Lucas wanted an opening film for empire strikes back. He read the script for this. He handpicked it. He said, you know what? I'll, I'll give you 25 grand to film this, just a low budget for a short little intro film. And they did. And Lucas loved it. And, um, you know, I thought it was okay. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's interesting because part of the way that it was filmed, the fight scene, um, George Lucas borrowed from for a fight scene from Empire Strikes Back where Luke is confronting Darth Vader in a, in a dream sequence and, uh, and Dagobah. Yeah. Yeah. On Dagobah. And, and, and it's interesting because you could see immediately Lucas did totally take that, that, uh, that technique. And it was also used, uh, for scenes in Excalibur. If you watch the, uh, the movie of King Arthur Excalibur from the eighties, which was also terrific. And it's interesting. It's, it's a short little film. It's, um, it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I wouldn't say it's it's great because it's so short. Like you, I, I could have watched more. I, I would have watched that as a full length movie. I, I wish it was full length so I could get more of the character and more of what's going on. But I for a short film, I thought it was very cool. And again, to a lot of people, it's probably really, really nostalgic as one of those, you know, I saw this during my childhood, but I can't remember a lot about it or what it was called or anything like that. But you know, check it out. Um, just, just for the fun of it, black angel on YouTube. So that's interesting. And, uh, finally, Mm -hmm. while you're on YouTube, check this out because someone sent it to me today and I was having a good old time with it. Um, I love making fun of televangelists and I don't mean, you know, you go to church or temple and there's your religious leader up there. I love making fun of the Lord Jesus. Come on down. Come on. Bring it on down. He's going to throw the devil out of your body. John, Bean. he's going to exhume the evil out of your body. John, Bean. and you can send money to this address right now. If you want to support God in all his glory, and these guys, these, these, these charlatans. Okay. All these televangelists that are begging for your money and you know ex- exercising the devil out of you and the healers be healed in Lord Jesus night. You know, those guys. Um, if you love that, check out on YouTube. It's called Metal Jesus COVID Freakout, and it's this guy playing metal guitar on on a split screen. And on the other side of the screen is one of these nutty over the top televangelists basically saying that he can pray COVID away, which he cannot hasn't been working. It's not, not doing mm-hmm. well, but he's basically saying COVID 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 is the devil. And I am, I am in Jesus name, getting the devil out of you. You are cured of COVID. And he's doing that while this guy next to him is playing metal guitar and the synchronicity of the two is just perfect. It's just fucking perfect. So check this out. You'll you'll crack up, get ready to piss your pants because this is really good. (laughs) Metal Jesus COVID freak out on YouTube. Check it out. (laughs) 
uh, and uh, you, you guys will love it. Trust me on this. I wouldn't steer you wrong. It's good. The Lord told me that you need a new Les Paul. Someone out there needs a new Les Paul right now. And in Jesus' name, you are getting a new Les Paul for Christmas. If you donate a $1,000 vow to my prayer service, the number right there in my PayPal account right underneath that, you will get a new Les Paul in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' name. That new Les Paul will be under your Christmas tree in the Lord's name. You just have to make a vow of faith. You just have to make a vow of faith. Maybe your paycheck from January isn't as big as you want, but in Jesus' name, you could still donate it to the church. If you want that new Les Paul, you have to make the prayers righteous, righteous, righteous. In Jesus' name, sow your seed. You have a seed. You can sow it. You can eat your seed, and you'd only be hungry a little bit, and then you'd be hungry again. But if you plant your seed and sow your seed, you will have a crop of bounty from Jesus' name that will be feeding your family for years. So your seed is your paycheck, and you donate your paycheck. You donate your paycheck right now in Jesus' name. Right there. There's the number right there. You donate that. and You will get that new call. Blessings be upon you. COVID be gone. Last polls raining from heaven. Oh, Lord. Jesus, you are good. Uba saw basai. Uba saw basai. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So check that out. Uh, check that out. It's uh, Metal Jesus COVID freak out. And it's real. It's real. You got, I mean, this is a real televangelist, not the shtick I'm doing right now, but just check it out and you'll, you'll have a good time with it. So there you go. Wow. Craziness. <laughs> and listen out there. Um, we are in the holidays. Today is giving Tuesday. You just spent black Friday spending on yourself and small business Saturday and cyber Monday. Giving Tuesday is a day to remember charities. I know we're all in hardship right now with what's going on with COVID and the economy and all sorts of stuff. But take a minute, think about what's important to you, whether you've had a family member with cancer, God forbid, or you want to support your legitimate house of worship, or you want to donate to an animal shelter, or you want to pick a charity. I like, I always support breast cancer awareness. That's why we're pink. You guys know that. Um, I support animal shelters. There's one on, if you go on Jonathan Mancuda on Facebook, there is a great animal shelter that I am supporting this year and, uh, talking about, you could check that out and donate to them. Um, it's a time of giving, giving Tuesday is where that one time a year when you never normally give something after all the shopping for yourself, even if it's $5, $10, because you know, my mother lives with leukemia, for instance, you know, I'm very big on that, or I've done work with Parkinson's or pick your charity, but give something. This is the time to show a good heart. It's that time of year. Give something, no matter how small, it all makes a difference. Food shelters right now need it. And uh, there's a lot of good charities right now to support, you know? So Giving Tuesday, mm -hmm. this is the time. Just give something to some charity or, or cause that you believe in that's special to you or to your family. Giving Tuesday, that's today. So remember that. And again, it's the holidays. Let's, let's all be in a good spirit. I know we're going through a lot, but we appreciate you coming here to spend time with myself and Neander Paul and Johnny and all the other shows we have. We hope we're an escape for you guys and girls and uh, we love you and we appreciate you more than anything. If you're watching right now, we appreciate you as fans of the show. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, those, those that are extra special, like our channel members. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, we, we do have favorites, but we do have favorites. We're, you know, <laughs> the rest of you are the rest of you may be the Jan Brady, but here we are, here we are thanking Marsha. And our, our favorite Marshas are uh Charles Green, Fruitcake Tony, Michael the Captain Smith, David Ennis, Mike Neese, Mickey Settlemeyer, Joe Christian, Nicole Mrazek, Sean Boland, Richard Poole, Linny Lou and Mary, Bozik, Crazy Cook 678. Carol Hatcher, False Flag, Margaret Scranton, Sean Silas, Gargitz Entertainment, Julia Baldessari, 
and uh, Wayne O A. Oh, Wayne O A. Added on. Thank you. And also channel members Hal Face, James Gum, Mancuda is the dildo fucker. Actually, it's supposed to be David Crosby is the dildo fucker, which he really is. And uh, 802 Blues, Mr. BHB Jr., that's Bruce, Frag5150, Pal Guitars, Dan Halen, Frank Corcoran, Bent Tom, Thomas Santiago, Brian Spaulding, Fender Guru, Music Therapy Laz, Ghost BC Rich, Hugh Caldwell, Jim Nicholas, Jesus Rapes Me, Jesus Rapes Me, and Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. Yeah, and please take a minute, leave a thumbs up, and leave comments in the video. We love replying to comments, and we love you guys and girls out there. We really appreciate you, and hope you had a good Thanksgiving. We're getting our way to the Christmas Hanukkah season, so let's all let's all be real nice to each other. Let's be good boys and girls, so uh, Santa will come our way, and hopefully he'll wipe it up after he comes our way. Dirty fat fuck. <laughs> Santa yeah. Claus is coming. That's what she said. He's making a fist, pumping it twice. Santa's North Pole is hard like ice. Santa Claus is coming. Yeah, okay. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. Leave thumbs up. Love you all. Good night, everybody. Good night. Steve Carmichael, you like my mittens? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. cold. Yeah, they're oh, ready man. to fist double pump you like that. It's cold. Baby, it's cold outside. Oh, Johnny Bean, it's cold outside. Come see my schween. <laughs> All right. Good night, night, everybody. Christmas songs coming up in future episodes for Christmas. We'll sing good night. Christmas songs. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night. See you guys uh, soon. Probably Friday. Good night, everybody. All right. Instagram, Johnny Bean. Giving Tuesday. Don't forget. Bye. Bye.